Hey, yo, what's good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the role podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I am one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got DJ Never here. Yo, what up? We got DJ D Miles. And we got Jamie the Great. Yeah, what up? What's good, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> How's your weekend, yo? It was Everyone's good. good? Cool. Everyone's good. It was cool. It was yeah. good. Shit is, uh, this was kind of a defining weekend in Las Vegas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just been, it's been getting busier and busier here in Las Vegas. I don't think just Las yeah. Vegas, I think across. Oh, yeah, everybody, right? everybody. I think everywhere is Everywhere was turned up. Yeah. Yeah. San Diego, LA. I saw, I saw a lot of DJs. Miami. I saw a lot of DJs with the selfie so, videos. Yeah. The, the selfie videos are back, it's right? Back. The selfie videos. The, the flyers are back. With the DJ, flyers. The DJs are back. promoting their gigs. The monthly, the month. the monthly fly, yeah. flyers. Those are back. The calendars. Yeah. You saw a calendar, the calendar too. The, the monthly calendars yeah. are back, yeah. right? Yeah. It feels good. The flexing is back. I'm, I'm not flexing. mad, right? Uh-huh. The yeah. bottles, <laughs> the shots. Yeah. The, the homies in the fucking booth is back. Everything is back. I can't wait for the cryo videos. Ooh. The cryo confetti <laughs> videos. Those are coming. Yo, Miami looks lit. You saw like, um, Travis Scott was at Travis um, Scott Live? was there. Yeah, shit, man. Live on, yeah. Ross one was DJing uh, Dave Grutman and Pharrell's new hotel. Oh yeah, he was there too. Uh-huh. He was um uh, the Good Time Hotel, right? Yeah, out there they had an opening. Damn. We actually opening. Oh, we actually. <laughs> 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 <What's that? laughs> hey, yo, D, how was your weekend? Word, word. Damn, that was That's dope. Good. That was yo, good, Hawaii must have been dope, yeah, man. You must be having a great time, man. Fuck, yo, man. yo, I like your fashion of a suit. D, Two piece that you put on. Oh, shit, oh, shit damn. Why, you, why you dissing D like that, Jamie? <laughs> yo, D, you gonna let him get away with that? Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. big whoop. <laughs> <laughs> yo, D's crazy, man. Man, you gotta chill, bro. D, why you, why you, uh, why you trying to play D with his fashion over suit? I'm no, not. Right? I'm not. That's what's up, man. You, <laughs> the thing is, we saw somebody else with the same two piece suit that he had on when we went to the. Uh, oh, we gotta talk about what happened. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> your big incident <laughs> got into a beef. Yo, can I ask you something? Your first, your first, your first, first beef. For 2021, I didn't really splash it on social media. It's not like 100% open yet. You know, they still only yeah, doing table reservations. Yeah. Vegas is kind of so. What's but happening? It was pretty packed out. It was, it was pretty, packed. All the tables were sold. And here's here's minutes. the thing. Here's the thing about Vegas right now is that they were initially going to do a rollout in May to open up a lot of these big venues, but they pulled back and they're going to wait for June 1st. So June 1st. Vegas is going to be at 100% capacity for businesses. Yes. Mm-hmm. So clubs are going to be open. It's going to be a free for all. It's good. I'm actually kind of scared to see what's going to happen in Vegas mm-hmm. when it's 100% and clubs are actually open. Mm-hmm. A lot of these clubs don't want to advertise that they're open because they're not technically open. So they don't want to put out flyers or like announce DJs and shit like that. They're kind of uh, being like, oh, we're like a lounge at like 50% capacity. Or restaurant. A lot of yeah. that shit is happening because of also prior DJ contracts that were on hold in 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the second a venue says like, yo, we're open and they're putting out flyers with other DJs names on it. Mm-hmm. All of these contracts, these do some I, of the, do I still have a job? Yeah. I mean, all of these <laughs> yeah. million dollar contracts that were on hold from last year, they're going to go into effect. And all yeah, of these yeah. guys are going to be like, wait, you're open now. Our contract, you got to pay us that money. You got to pay us our money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of these clubs are waiting for June 1st. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they don't want to deal with these lawsuits. Which which makes no sense because uh, Memorial Memorial Day weekend is literally two days before fucking uh, June 1st. Yeah, but no, none of these. It makes sense though. Yeah. Yeah. Because they want to get that money. Before they have to spend, give that um the artist that money that they owe them. Ah, they can never (laughs) see. I don't understand. Like uh, these clubs, they want to get that money. They want to get the money before they reopen. Yeah. So they don't. So when they have the, they have the money to um pay the DJs that they owe the money to. Do you get it? Does that make nah, sense? No, that's not how it works. No, nah, I, I don't think they they. I think they just can't. They have to follow regulations. Oh, okay, cool. Maybe it is. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it's a combination of both. It could be. Both. No, no, they can't right. break rules like that because then they'll lose their gambling license. It's not like a like a spot. They're in a casino. They yeah, have to follow casinos. guidelines to like the fullest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not that. Um. So back to you. Oh no! So I was yeah. So I was DJing. At, yeah, having a good time. Oh, it's just, this is the weird thing. Okay, like <laughs> the, you know what the the problem is, right? And I realize it's me, right? The problem is, is that I don't have a friendly face. I think that's my problem when I DJ. Don't you think? Never. You you're, agree you're, with you're this, no, right? I'm gonna tell you, your demeanor is not approachable. 
It's, because we is, had a right? home, uh, one of our homegirls that's a listener. Yeah. She fucks with you and she wanted to go say hi to you. But she's like, but, he looks a little too into it and I didn't want to bug him. And I was like, you should just go bug the shit out of him. It's not even just that. I mean, I know a lot of people that are scared to approach you. You're like. You're kind of scary, man. You feel, they feel like you're like. Oh, like Intimidating? That, that you just unapproachable. Yeah. Well, where did this come from? You. You answer maybe, that question. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, where did that come from? Like, I, maybe, I feel like did you get a maybe bad the words were on the street. That no, no, no. Gotta, that's unfair. You got to act bullshit. You got to act attitude problem. You are fixing this. That's mister. bullshit. You know that's bullshit, though, right? <laughs> you know that. Like, like, what have I done? You act like I'm... <laughs> Korean with an attitude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> KWA. <laughs> anyway, I'm DJing, right? Yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I've am I'm been vaxxed. I'm double vaxxed, right? Yeah. I got two... <laughs> double vaxxed. I got double penetration on the vaccine. <laughs> uh-huh. You you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you just fix your folders. So you're ready to go. You're amped up. Yeah. So like, yeah. So like, I'm I'm DJing and I'm not wearing a mask because there's really no one around me, right? There was no one in around the DJ booth on no. the stage, right? No. Mm-hmm. And then you guys came through kind of like the last hour or so. We came at four o'clock. Right. We, and we then uh, am I? I'm not gonna say their name. No. Or fuck can you them. bleep it? No. Fuck just them. bleep it because I'm I'm not gonna give them a fake name. Give them a fake name. Fucking <laughs> stupid one and stupid two. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta bleep that <laughs> yeah i gotta bleep that um but yeah anyway so a gentleman well, they were dressed like sailors right they were yeah. dressed like what is it? they had a little yeah like that's, sailors. that's they, they was it stick that's stitch? a stick they stick but it's like stick. captains <laughs> of the industry shit yeah that, they, they, but they've, been, they've been doing this for a minute those are though. the og sailors yeah, you better those call are the og rock. captains that's stone rock and graham yep yeah. Shout to Stone Rock and Graham, the uh, captains salute. of the industry. The yeah. only the only captains I salute. I mean, these so these dudes were dressed in like they've been doing this for years though. They have been, yeah. Before, not before Stone and Graham. Stone and Graham I go back to the mid two thousands. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. They're I know the they, they used to do like um, I don't want to say what club, but they used to perform there. They used to do karaoke of House of Pain, Jump Around. Oh jeez, where? I, I can't say it. I'm B. not gonna Come say on. the club. Oh okay. I'm just gonna say their name. And you have to bleep it, or you don't want to do that work. That's too know. much. It's just, just give him a fucking name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sailors? <laughs> just say the name. I'll bleep it. Fuck it. Um, Go. I'm done. I'm about to say Gilligan, the um, skipper. Gilligan, yeah. <laughs> Gilligan. <laughs> so Gilligan uh, walks Gilligan up to you. Gilligan the skipper, right? <laughs> <laughs> he comes over. So this dude this dude comes over uh-huh. while I'm DJing, and on, he didn't have a, I mean, dude was like sweaty looking. He looked, he looked like inebriated which is fine yeah he and, drunk. but he, he didn't just, have a mask his, on yeah and i didn't have a mask on and i gotta i gotta stop this too but every time someone approaches me and they don't have a mask on i do this like yo stand I, I, back no, I, I do that all the time also. You do that? I, did, I did it last weekend at work and some chick tried to come up to the dj yeah booth, and i jumped back i'm like yo can you please but we gotta stop back. that though. no no don't no, we, no, no, don't no, we that's, that's she didn't have a mask on i didn't have my mask no, okay I have my mask on. you can't you can't be wrong for being in a pandemic for a whole year and that's your first reaction so you can't be. See, yeah, this this you, is a conversation I want to have because I was talking with my boy James Wang in New York. Shout out to James. Uh-huh. Shout out to James, fellow Korean brother, full um, bearded. Uh huh. He says I have uh, PTSD from from COVID twenty twenty. I mean, we all do I because like- he's like, yo, <laughs> he's like, yo, you need to uh, see the light and just like Embracing. start coming outside I mean, and start embracing the world. You know again. what? I, I think I have that also because I actually went out the other day. One one night I went out. Whatever. Yeah. Went to downtown Vegas, mm-hmm. and I was like kind of nervous to be around people. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's, I was like, I mean, downtown Las Vegas is kind of. Oh, that's that's that's, that's like it. remember like remember Mad Max when he entered the Thunderdome. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 first, yeah. That's kind of yeah. what downtown Las yeah. Vegas <laughs> looks like. It's like crazy. Thund- <laughs> it looks like Road Warriors. <laughs> Thunderdome. Nah, I mean, nah, they got like, they got like, nah, they got like the all those um, restaurants and shit down there now. It's like, oh, no, it's, but it's still a bunch good. of kids it that are just good drunk. But, but it's still, everyone's. I just feel wild. nervous being around people. And I just, I got to get out of that. I just, we got to get out of that. Yeah, I think that's a bad habit to be like, whoa. Yeah, exactly. Man. Okay, I got to stop that. But it's not yeah. bad. It's not. We, I, it's understandable to do. It's that. understandable, but, but, but it's, it's bad. It, you got to chill it a little bit. But it's understandable. Yeah, but if I'm still doing well in August. You know. Oh no no! I mean, yeah, motherfuckers. But it's May. It's not August. So you can't say that yet. Yeah, I know. So if yeah, there was do- a couple of, of of chicks that were coming up to the booth to request, uh-huh. or I don't know, talk to me, or like I don't know, I don't change the, the music, and I was just like, <laughs> to the Heisman. I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the yeah, Heisman, so, the so COVID Heisman. <laughs> <laughs> whoa. <laughs> 
So I don't. Anyway, this guy he comes up and initially he's in a like a sailor outfit yeah. with the captain's yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Gilligan. Gilligan comes up, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Gilligan comes up and he's just like you know yo like this and I'm like oh whoa, whoa. and I'm in the middle of DJing right yeah mm-hmm. and then the I couldn't really hear him because the the monitors right there it's and I loud. try to turn it down but there's still speakers on stage yeah so like I'm like huh I was like what and he's just like yo I'm Gilligan <laughs> right <laughs> yes and then I was like oh I was like yo what's up what's up and I shook his hand and then I turned around and kept DJing mm-hmm. and then he uh, left. Honestly, I wouldn't even shook his hand. No, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Oh, no. That was <laughs> a fist. That was pro- Yeah, you have to count. Did I, I don't even think I shook his hand. But wait, was this before we got there? No, you saw the whole thing. You saw no, the whole thing. No, but yeah. I'm saying. So, oh, so he approached it while we were there. Yeah. Okay, so there was because he made it seem on socials that there were, it was two. Times. Okay, wait. Well, let, let me explain my side first, mm-hmm. right? So then, I um. So then I I went back to DJing, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then he comes back maybe a minute later. And he reintroduces himself. He's like, "Yo, I'm Gilligan. I I don't know if you heard, but I'm Gilligan. I'm I'm Gilligan, like Wait, Gilligan. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm Gilligan. Like like yeah. like enunciating the syllables, right? <laughs> Gilligan. I'm Gilligan. And I was like, you know what I mean? And I looked at him and I was like, oh shit, maybe it seemed like I dissed him before. So I gave him like an extra like bow, like, oh yo man, I, yo, I mean, it's good to see you. I even patted his back. I think. <laughs> Did you know who this was though? <laughs> no. I, Have you ever seen him before? You seen I've him heard around? of him. Yeah. And honestly, with my memory, I probably may have spoken to him, mm-hmm. but I don't remember. For the life of me, I don't remember. By mm-hmm. the way, and I'm not saying that to diss. You know what I'm saying? This I just is a don't. PSA. Kirk's memory is really bad. Yeah, my memory is really bad. It's horrific. Yeah. It's bad. Yes. Um, but then. And then he was like, he, he was kind of smiling like, oh, and I was like, yo, respect, man, respect. Mm-hmm. And then he wanted to like hug or like do like the uh, the hug pound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, like, and I and we did a fist bump. Mm-hmm. And, and then he left. Thing. Yeah. And then, you know, I finished my gig with y'all and then we left, right? Yeah. We went to get some Chengdu. We Ooh, get some food. Chinese food. Mm-hmm. And then this dude, Gilligan, <laughs> posts on his Instagram stories like I'm an asshole and I kicked him out the booth and I told him his music sucks because he does production. Mm-hmm. Yes. So th- th- were these guys big EDM DJs or something back in the day? No, or? they wasn't even DJs, man. What, what they, they was like hype guys. They get on stage and just like hype. They, they hype the crowd up. They do one of their songs. They'll probably do like, like I said. Oh, they, so they were like a group. They were like a, like exactly. mostly, a duo. Yeah. They were two brothers. Yeah, yeah. I thought they were DJs. No, no. no. Oh, okay. So they have music. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he was saying on social media, should I just read what he said? Oh, oh. you should definitely read what he said, because that shit was bizarre, man. That shit was crazy, especially when he brought up his father and shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, that made it seem like you're the biggest asshole. But well, again, We didn't even bring up that he had his father there. Yeah. But we'll talk about that in a second after <laughs> I read this shit. So this is the first slide, right, Kirk? So, <laughs> so slide number one. Slide <laughs> presentation time. You can see over here. By the way. Or here. If you want to see the visuals, go on YouTube.com slash yeah. World Podcast. We've been stepping up our YouTube Yeah, I should content. start. You better subscribe yeah. before it's too Check late. Check out YouTube.com slash <laughs> World Podcast. We add views. And visuals you see, you see Gilligan's um, post. Well, we're going to take out his name. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to put him on blast like that. Nah. Right. We're going to crop um, this shit out. But this shit is funny because he... Okay, I'll explain even more later. And then we're going to give our perspective. I got, I got an additional DM this morning. <laughs> oh, a good morning one? You got a good morning text? Yo. <laughs> He's going to text you. You know text. when the dust settles and you're like, yo, what did I do last yeah. night? Yeah. You know, yesterday, what did I do yesterday? Anyway. All right, so his first slide, slide number one. <laughs> he said, it's packed today. Um, you know, DJ Crook, Crooked kicked us off the stage. He said, I don't like your, uh, our music. Keep your resident DJ job, pal. Middle finger. Uh, get your shit right, crooked. Watch your words with us, bro. Glad you play to a solo to a sold out crowd today. By the way, um, there's some misspelling in there. Yeah, um, clearly. So I, slide number. Two. I didn't mention his. I didn't even know about his music. He didn't mention his music, mm-hmm. and I definitely didn't kick him out of the booth because we were yeah. there. Y'all would notice because you were sitting behind me. Pause. We were right? looking at yeah. you. I saw the whole thing. So you saw him come up. Was it a negative interaction? Mm-mm. Just that beginning, like you said before, when he tried to like give you a pound. Yeah, you did you. do the. You, the have, to, you have to push him aside. Be like, yo, chill. I didn't chill. touch him. I just no, said, you did the high but you didn't yeah. touch him. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. 
But if I was kicking him out, wouldn't you see me? Of absolutely, yeah. yeah. You would have been seeing me like, yo, get the fuck out. Yeah, right. would, yeah. I would have got up and been like, yo, what's going yeah, on? We yeah, we would have got up. Your demeanor was fine. It wasn't so like. So then in his second slide, he just goes on, <laughs> another, just changes the angle of the picture, but basically says the same shit he said in the same slide. I don't even know his dad was on there, right? Was, yeah, he'd been his dad up to his the dad stage. His dad was yeah. apparently dressed in the sailor outfit like him. Well. Yeah. Right? Uh, we were trying to show love. He said, I don't like your shit. Leave. This guy's a fucking loser. <laughs> Romeo Reyes calmed um, my dad down. Thanks, Romeo. Romeo I, didn't, I didn't even see Romeo. Romeo wasn't even there. <laughs> was Romeo there? <laughs> Who was Romeo? Romeo, if you listen to this, was you there that? Romeo, you got to tell, tell us your point of view because we didn't see that. I didn't even see Romy Rome. Yeah. I can't. Romy Rome. Romy Rome. <laughs> I feel uncomfortable calling Rome. Romeo. Where well, you at, Rome? D- fam, I can't. I feel uncomfortable calling a grown man Romeo. It's okay. It's like calling him delicious. Nah, it's not the same thing, man. <laughs> I mean, we call somebody fabulous for so long. I mean, Romeo. Anyway, Rome, Romeo was there. Thank you, Romeo. Yo, shout out to Romeo Reyes because we live in the same building and I see him once he, in a while. He only lives up there. He lives up above you, right? Yeah, he lives right above you. <laughs> nah, he does? Yeah. I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know about that, but I'm just joking. He lives he in the same building, though. He comes down, says what's up. He tries to borrow condoms and shit yeah, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sugar, <laughs> sh- sugar and condoms. <laughs> <laughs> no, shout to Romeo though. Yeah, yeah. We, we seen him in the elevator yeah. a few times. Um, he didn't even say what's up. So I should should we feel some type of way that he say hello? Yeah, what's going on, Romeo? Maybe you should feel some type of way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but he did calm a motherfucker down. That yeah. you know, I didn't want his dad beating my ass or some yeah. shit, uh-huh. or him. I didn't, yo, imagine me getting beat down by Gilligan and his dad. <laughs> Y'all would have just watched that. shit I would have left there. Yeah, yeah, I probably would have been laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, so Romeo calmed him down. So slide number three is just the middle finger uh-huh. and his hand, and complete jerk to my dad. Right today, uh, fired this motherfucker. Ooh, mm. asshole said. First off, I don't like you guys or your music. We're not negative, but middle finger, this motherfucker, get out. All right. Damn. Uh, and then the last slide <laughs> is a picture of his dad. Yes. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. And his dad is dressed up in the same sailor's outfit. Mm-hmm. And he's, don't laugh because this is Gilligan sad. Senior. This is the sad part. Gilligan Senior was there. So he says, trying to get something going. Crooked trying to make our father dance. It's fucking dead. Our father has dementia and still say, Crooked needs work. We agree. And there's so many things I want to ask about this. So his dad has dementia and his dad is in the club. Yeah. But then again, his dad still had, he was good Enough at- sense to know that you was black. Yeah. Oh, whatever, damn! Not. What a review. <laughs> you know, like I don't, I actually don't mind a motherfucker saying I'm whack. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But why did he have to add his dad? <laughs> I know, right? That, like they, at they, a club, they, you know, there's moments where I probably sounded whack. You know what I'm saying? It was I a mean, fluid, you had a little delay. Actually, you talking about, you talking about an old man that has dementia. But yeah. why would you bring your he, father with dementia to the club? Exactly. Yeah. And so much, but questions. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna go into that because no, that's a, that's, that's another a separate, thing. That's, right? a, that's a separate yeah, thing. Yeah, has nothing to do. But, what, but why but, do you have to mention it? Is my question. Look, that's an uh, here. Here's a good. Here's a thing. Mm-hmm. How did his imagination come up with this? Because none of this happened. None of this happened. Well, he was drinking. Probably. You had you had probably an interaction with him for ten that, seconds. That lick and yeah. sun kicked in, and he was just like, "Yeah, this is why he was probably thinking all this shit right well, in his head." We gotta get Romeo on the phone soon. Uh... <laughs> To see the perspective. Yeah, yo, should I call? I, I got Romeo's number. You want to call him? Should we call, should call him? him? Call him real should quick. Him? Yeah, just call him. If he picks up, we'll ask him. Right. <laughs> oh, he's not. She never answer. ain't got it like no, that. No, 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 never no. even got it like that. Hey, maybe Romeo was instigating the shit. Maybe, right, maybe he was. Yeah. That's what we gotta get to the bottom of. It was this. like do the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> when dude, when when the white dude stepped on uh, I'm bugging out sneakers. I'm bugging out sneakers. Jordans. Yeah, man, he meant to do that. He was and even was talking Martin. about your mama. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually have video uh-huh. Okay so this dude Actually posted a video On his feed On top of all the Instagram stories Yo like It just boggles my mind Because like I like I, I don't know What was going on In his head You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. uh, Pause DJ Crooked Kicked me out Of the fucking DJ booth today <laughs> Kicked me out Wow So get the fuck out I don't like you guys Alright It's so weird <laughs> I now, said, now, now, you wouldn't yeah, say that, man. I'm, I know. I'll give you that much. You would say, <laughs> get the fuck out. You're an asshole, but you're not that much of an yeah, asshole. Yeah, man. You know, like, I wouldn't just have someone come up and be like, yo, get out. I don't like your music. Get, get, no, like, can no, you imagine no. me saying all that shit? And you're probably not, even, no offense, but you're probably not even aware of his music. Right yeah, now. like, 
I mean that th- I wouldn't even if I didn't like a motherfucker's music, I wouldn't say, "Yo, yeah, get you, out." You I don't like, like your music. Uh, yeah. We just had a good text conversation. Romeo Ray's calm me the fuck down. Woo! Thank you, Romeo. Thank you, Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> for doing that work, baby. Right. But here's the problem. Oh no. I'm like, yo. You got more beef? I don't more know. More problems? Hey, here we go. Oh, crooked. And also Romeo, player of shit. <laughs> now he's beefing with Romeo. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, he's after, he, really? after he's taking Romeo for calming him down. Now he's shitting on Romeo. Like play his music. Yeah. 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 Play our shit. Mm. Play our shit. <laughs> I got it. Top 40 DJs. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> <laughs> Top 40 DJs. I actually like this guy. Boop, I like this guy. Boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. I like this guy. I like this guy. <laughs> remember, remember Christopher Walken in uh, what was that? Ah, oh. in a Quentin movie. Uh, um, oh, in, remember Christopher Walken in True Romance? Yeah, yeah, I like this guy. And then he blows his brains out. <laughs> Play some new music. Break some new music, man. Be the breakers. Ooh. I love Romeo. Crooked. I don't hate you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of this episode, Crooked. I don't hate you. No, man. Play some fucking new fucking shit. Woo. You too, Romeo. Play some new shit. Damn. <laughs> He's you mad. You play our shit. Even this Crooked. I think anybody plays our shit. <laughs> well. I don't give a fuck. Play it. Take a man, risk. Maybe play some play mix. Play our shit. If it sucks, text me. I don't think it'll suck. <laughs> Take a risk, boys. I'm out. So, <laughs> I didn't have any. He didn't well, give me no music. Like I know, what? Like, yeah, exactly. He didn't give you a dump drive or nothing. Like I that. don't understand the the what is it the entitlement mm-hmm. of entitlement. someone hate like hating on me on their social media, mm-hmm. fabricating a story about me talking shit to them and kicking him and his father with dementia out of a night out of a day club, right? Yeah. And then being like, yo. Why aren't you breaking music? Why aren't you playing my shit? Yo, fam, you never gave me no music. Yeah. You never even once mentioned your music to me. I don't mm-hmm. understand. Like, obviously, he was drinking. You probably a little. assumed that you knew who he was and you knew, you knew his but shit. But that's also entitlement as well, right? Yeah. That exactly. everyone knows who the fuck I am. Yeah. Like, yeah. would you presume to enter an establishment or a venue mm-hmm. and just assume that everyone knows who the fuck you are? You yeah. know what I'm saying? No, I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, when, I don't want to say, when, when was he. Like doing all of these, hosting all of these events and doing all this shit. This has to be like 2010. 2010, 10 years ago. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Ago, yeah. mm-hmm. Like I don't, I don't remember a shit, lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't make me try to remember. I didn't even know these those guys is like still doing their thing. Yeah. I mean, yo, I'm not trying to shit on anyone's hustle. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's obviously having some sort of. He's going through some shit. All I'm saying is like, I feel for you, fam. He deleted all of this shit, right? Mm-hmm. And then he fucking Ooh, he he's DM'd so... me, right? Because mm-hmm. he was DMing me. Yeah, we... I told you not to respond. Yeah, yet. he was DMing me like you know, like like fuck you, this, that, and how do you not know who I am? Right. But he said, "Hey, brother, was having an off day yesterday, uh, dealing with a lot. You know, my apologies." He said some other shit. I'm not going to put it up there. Mm-hmm. But they're like, I understand that shit. That's why I'm not going to put his name out there. Yeah, it was just a funny thing that happened to you. I mean, it's funny that it happened, but I I can't help but empathize to see where he's going because I don't think, I don't think all of us has been, I don't think we all acted like this motherfucker. But we've all, I feel like we've all been in a place where this motherfucker has been. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Where we would potentially do something self destructive. I don't know, like radical. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Never look at me like nah, nah. I just, yeah, nah, I don't know. <laughs> Speak for yourself. And Jamie's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know just, about that one, but go ahead. I'm just trying to be. Uh, I don't know about that. I'm trying to understand. Am I, am, I, am I empathizing too much? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, what would crooked? What would crooked pre-therapy? What would he have said? Because uh, yo, a motherfucker was calling me soft the other day. One of my boys in New York. Damn. Or oh, even Boogie Blind was like, "This ain't no therapy shit." Yeah. yeah. These motherfuckers like pre-therapy. Soft-ass. I would have been like, "Fuck this dude, right?" Yeah, you would have been like, "You motherfucker." Nah, you would nah. You wouldn't say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> what? <You're> fucking- <laughs> I, I do empathize, man. Honestly, man. But she has you know what? If again. it would no, if it was a packed club, if it yeah. was like a hundred percent, hundred percent capacity, and it was like a performer, and yeah. he was DJing, you definitely yeah, would have yeah, like yeah. flipped out. On I would have flipped some out. Shit. Yeah. Right. yeah. 
It wasn't like that at all. It but was it, just, but the thing is, I wouldn't tables. have fl- I wouldn't have flipped out because nothing happened at no, the time. No, nothing happened yeah. at all. All this you shit know was a delusion. Yeah, it wasn't. It didn't happen. You had a, first interaction was about ten seconds, and the homegirl was there with us. Actually, she was standing right next to me. Yeah, and then the second inter- interaction lasted about fifteen seconds, and no, and and neither of those times it looked like you were angry or you came off or you waved somebody off. You actually stood in front of the DJ booth the whole time. Yeah. So I mean, I did my job. You did yeah. your job. I hope I did my job. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Shout out to Romeo Reyes for, yo, Romy. for saving your life. Romy Rome. Shout out to you. Rome. <laughs> Romy Shout out to the Bay. Romy Rome. <laughs> Shout out to the Niners. But um, yeah, man. I mean, I, I don't I don't know what to say about this. I mean, it just it just it boggles my mind that someone could. Fabric- I could. We it's kind of crazy. Like imagine mm-hmm. a celebrity and what they have to go through with random off. Like oh my god, just the smallest interaction with mm-hmm. a fan or a stranger. And then mm-hmm. someone just turns it into something to get some attention. Yeah, that happens. I'm nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like never. Yeah. You never. You guys know I'm nobody, yo. You, and you know? don't really pretend to be anybody either. I was I was asking you this before, but do I like? I, did I bring this on myself because I'm not more welcoming? Like when when he came up, like I have to. What was you supposed to do? Because yeah, you keep saying like I don't know. Flowers. Like say no. what's up to him. It wasn't like he was ignoring him. Like yo, get again. Shit. I'm not, I'm a, I think I, no. Honestly, I think I'm a bigger asshole when, when it comes to people <laughs> coming to the DJ booth and trying oh, to request a, a song or whatever. Kill me. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna change my whole image. I'm gonna just be just smiling all be the like, time. Be like, it was good. I you gotta to, be more amicable. You're, y'all, y'all New York yeah. motherfuckers are too angry sometimes. Yeah, let that shit go. I think New York is a problem. Yeah, I do think that's not, a problem. I, no, but then that, again, that. but then again, he's like sweetheart over Cause, here. Because like, it's maybe when I'm uh-huh. DJing, I have my subway face on. Because everything happens in the subway. You don't want to get fucked with, right? So you want to have this, like, face or you want to have this, like, demeanor mm-hmm. where, like, the motherfuckers don't, don't, so don't fuck with you. Don't fuck with me, right? Yeah, yeah. don't do that. You know Not today, Playboy. Yeah. So I feel like maybe we still hold on to that from, like, just growing up in that. New York. It definitely could be that, yeah. Or just walking in the street. You need some kind of demeanor. You can't walk down like a, like a Vic, you know? Yeah. You like need. a victim. You got to fucking... Yeah, I'm not. I want to say like a act tough or whatever, but you just got. Yeah, you just can't seem soft. You not today. Not, not today, today face. Not today. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not gonna happen here. So <laughs> you see me when I'm DJing. Do I have a not today face when I'm DJing, you're or very, do I just look focused? You're, you're very focused. laser focused. You just focus on your on what you're doing. Right. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's what the whole. You know, like there's DJs that's like really all happy and want to like conversate and do shots. Yeah, you just want to just DJ and do your thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't want to do shit, but play music. <laughs> you just want to get the crowd going, play your music. So I got. You're, you're not trying to be like, hey, what's up? Oh my god! You're not but I gotta learn. Let's, I let's gotta do, learn that. Let's do a shot. Let's do a shot. Come on. Shot, let's do a shot, get around shot. Let's, shots. Get some shots. Let's, yo, let's party, man. Nah, I gotta learn like, that. I gotta learn that just shit, for right? The DJ. Is there is there a place for DJs like me that that don't do selfie don't videos? Know, maybe shit? that's a maybe that's something we could work on. You can yeah. Start a class, subject, start a class, whatever. Like a, <laughs> start a class, a master class. You know, you know who has the best selfie videos? Uh, who I know what you're saying. Who five. No, Just Incredible. They both of them do. Just Incredible is phenomenal. Yo, when, when you might have to call Justin. I might have to call Justin. I'll, I'll get a group chat going. That's Should I, I want to call him now, actually. But <laughs> yeah, you he's gonna, no, that's going to throw him off. No, no, but. He'd be like, Just yo, what up, Jay? <laughs> you no. know, he's so happy. Just I here. see Just Incredible, like, back in pre-COVID, I would see Just Incredible's selfie videos when he's DJing a, a spot. Uh-huh. I'd be like, yo, the, the angles and the way he does it, yeah. this shit oh, no, look no, lit. No, no. I, was like, yo, I was like, yo, <laughs> that shit look turn. I want to be over there, yo. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, you might I do have, have, call, you might have to call No, Justin. I have to. I have to step it up. I have to smile more. Yeah, more gra- like, yeah. hey, welcoming. Maybe I have to like you, you dive. Can't, don't don't do that, man. Maybe <laughs> that's not true, Crooked. Don't. But then again, don't be someone maybe, that maybe, you're not, man. <laughs> Kill again. You can't do I, that, I, man. Maybe I have to do like a, you know, like motherfuckers have a baby voice. Maybe I have to like create like a yeah, like voice. a what's up voice, like oh shit, what up? <laughs> like I have to do, oh man, it's oh, been a shit. long time. Oh shit! Oh well, shit! You're gonna take, take the mic off. You gonna do a, a, yeah. a little turn around? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I gotta do something. Yeah, just nah, man. be more like, welcoming. Just, be, just, just be you, man. Like a custom handshake. That yeah. I it's it's too late. It's too late to do something now, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, too, I'm too old. I'm too old for this shit. I can't just, just be you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying I feel like me and his dad would have got along. Like, yeah, man. <laughs> you got back problems too. <laughs> match it. Oh man. Uh, anyway, man. I don't know. Shasta, I don't know what to say about this. Shasta I wish to Gilligan. Sorry, you had that bad. 
a delusional symptom thing. No, I, don't I just know think he had it. a bad, you know. He a, had a bad I mean, day going dude, on too. Yo, son. He was partying. He was drinking in the daytime. It's like, what you expect, man? It was a nice day out too. I just think a lot of things can happen, you know, when you're down and shit, you know. Yeah, things may look differently than It kind of seemed like post, uh, like, you know, when motherfuckers spend a lot of money mm-hmm. and they kind of regret it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, And, and yeah, they, yeah. They, they can't shit on the right people. So they just they take it out on anyone? They take it on, on the DJ. <laughs> the DJ, <laughs> you know as always. <laughs> the bad, yeah, you get the I don't know, man. man. But shout out to Gilligan. Uh, we'll, we'll get all your music and we'll play it next time you're around. That's what he wants. I mean, at least send it out. Yeah, send it. I know. Yeah, I mean, Sam you talking about you want DJs to play your shit. How do you shit on? How do you shit on motherfuckers when you don't? I don't see. His, I don't see his music on DJ City. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, you like that, right? <laughs> do you see it on Beat Source? I don't see it on no! Beat Source either. <laughs> man, Jeez. you might have to email somebody, man. <laughs> yeah, man. And DJ and B, DJ City and Beat Source, you know, <laughs> that's the standard. In. Exactly, they man. got everything. Yeah. <laughs> So you might have to go. For DJs can get they your should, stuff. They should sponsor us. Yeah. yeah. yeah man. Um, <laughs> all right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's do it. Should all we right. talk about Tau Group buying Las Vegas? Yeah, man. Buying Las <laughs> Vegas? What? It seems all right, so, like it, right? <laughs> yeah, I need you guys to break this down. All right, so Tau Group, they own multiple properties, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason Strauss, No Tepper no, no yeah. You know them very know well them personally, from yes. New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Tough they life. started with the clubs out there, yep. right? Mm-hmm. They they did all the dope. They were I remember up. them before they like when they started Envy in New York. Right. Which is like when they first when they first um clubs. big parties that they was doing in New mm-hmm. York was Envy. That was back in 90, 98, 99. Wow. Damn. And then what so, did, yeah. what what else did they do? They did um they did um they did, Limelight. They did, they did Limelight. Tunnel. They did um Life. I they did, did Life. life. Um Sweet U- Sixteen. Sweet Sixteen, that right. was their property. One of the first um, places they owned. Yeah, Eugene's. Oh, Eugene's. Oh, Eugene's. Yeah, yeah, they did that. And then they blew up with uh, Marquee. Yep. Uh, Tao, Tao restaurant. Mm-hmm. And then you know, obviously they opened Tao Las Vegas. Yeah, they moved in, started doing um, stuff in Las Vegas right after the Light Group opened Light. It yep. was kind of like a year, two years, or a year after, right? Kind Maybe of? like a year, like two years later. Two years Tau later. Tau is 04, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Tau here is 04. Mm-hmm. So Tau, you like huge club. It's still open. It's maybe the longest running club in Vegas. I yeah. don't know. Like, mm, it's, it's I think so. Be. It has to be. It yeah. has to be. It is. Like 15, 16, I don't know how many years, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 17? Yeah, about 17. Now. <clears throat> and then they had Marquee, and mm-hmm. then they opened Lavo, Italian Mar- restaurant, yeah. the, uh, Lavo, New York. I mean, they go on and on and on. They LA just got to open mm-hmm. up the Dream Hotel. And all right. That stuff. They have Tao, mm-hmm. Chicago. Yeah. yeah. Right. Shout out mm-hmm. to Colin Comer. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyway, they got all of these properties Beauty in Essex, Dream Hotel, yeah. Artichoke Pizza, mm-hmm. and then uh, MSG, Madison Square Garden, literally bought them and acquired them for $180 million, Yeah. I want to say three years ago. Damn. Three to four About years it, yeah. ago. Mm-hmm. In 2017 ish. So when Madison Square Garden took over mm-hmm. uh, and started working with Tau Group, um, you know, <laughs> they they they're building this huge, like, sphere in Vegas right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. It's it's the a mega it's sphere, like a monopoly. It, it, so wait, they're opening they're they're opening this big sphere in Vegas, and it uh-huh. looks like the Earth. You know the Earth property that I showed you? It looks like a planet Earth. Yeah, they're opening that sphere. It's gonna be Tau Group. And um, at Madison Square Garden, what and now hell? it was just announced uh, probably a week ago, right? That they bought all the Hakkasan properties. Yep, that includes Hakkasan and the MGM. Okay, Hak- let's 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 list the properties. Yeah, um, that's Hakkasan and the MGM, Ling Ling Room in Hakkasan, right? Mm-hmm. Wet Republic mm, in yeah. MGM, uh, Omnia and Caesars, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and then there's like Seersuckers, the restaurant. Uh-huh. Um, Jewel. Did, did you say what, say, we say Web Republic. Yeah, Web yeah, Republic. Yeah. I was gonna say Jewel too, right? Jewel in the Aria mm-hmm. and Liquid in the Aria. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of fucking properties. Like all together, they own sixty-one entertainment, dining, and nightlife venues, mm-hmm. Damn. and twenty-two markets across five continents. Yeah. Shit. So I'm assuming they had an Omni. Uh, I think it was Cabo, right? I they think they one, got that they as well. Yeah, San Diego so. as yeah, well, yeah. right? Yeah, they, they got yeah, Omnia. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Omnia San Diego as <laughs> yeah. well. I was talking to Jules actually. Shout out to Jules. Shout to Jules. Mm-hmm. Uh, the biggest <laughs> <laughs> Filipino wedding DJ in, in Southern California. <laughs> My man. So um, Jules? Jules would, would DJ Omnia San Diego all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
And anyway, I, you know, I was wondering, because One Oak was Hakkasan property, right? Yeah. Yeah. So One Oak was going to close, though. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. they did. Well, what's the status? So, the, well, I mean, One Oak is closed. But it's one of those properties that, like, and I want to kind of get into this a little bit. It's one of those properties that weren't necessarily, like, uh, new and like fresh, like after a certain years, after three to five years, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. depending on the marketing team behind any property yeah. or venue, mm-hmm. they could lose momentum or they could stay the same, really say the stay the same, but they can like kind of get by. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. when you got like a property like One Oak, yeah. it was just running on bare bones and it was making money. Mm-hmm. So for Hakkasan, they were like, why should we close this? Yeah, and was, I, was, and, yeah. and it, was, it was just steadily making money. But it definitely wasn't one of the premier venues at the time. Yeah. But they kept it operating because it was making fucking money. Mm-hmm. You know, so I remember they were the year they were going to close it was 2018. They were, their, their lease was up or something. Their the lease, first time they announced their contract it was close. or lease, yeah, yeah, they were no. Well, there was talks behind the scenes that yo, like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. One mm-hmm. Oak, you know, the lease is up. You know, we're going to close in 2018. Mm-hmm. And I think. They they were like, but this is making money. Mm-hmm. So they made a deal with the Mirage because One Oak is in the Mirage Hotel. Yeah. They're like, yeah. let's extend it for like a, another year. Mm-hmm. And in that year, I think they just they were they were making money. So they were like, let's just continue a three year contract. Mm-hmm. I may have gotten some of this mixed up, but all I know is there was they did renew the lease for a three year contract. And that was going to be up this yeah, last year because I was talking to the lighting yeah. guy. And the lighting guy was like, yo, I think we're going to close. And then last time I saw him, he's like, yo, I think we're going to open. We're going to stay open, like, because this spot is making money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They had a minimum budget. You know, they had good enough marketing to keep uh, steady traffic in. Mm-hmm. And they had, you know, good DJs. And it wasn't, like, necessarily the biggest DJs, but it was really talented, like, local DJs that were holding down the venues. Mm-hmm. And then you would they would have some guest spots with, like, DJ Premier or whatever. And artists as well, like right. YG. Yeah, they would have some... Y, yeah, YG would go there and kill it. It would be uh, packed. Tory Lanez, mm-hmm. I want to say. Tory Lanez there. before, yeah. Yeah, so it was a few people in there, yeah. Yeah, so they had, like, a, a budget to get shit going. And mm-hmm. I think they kind of offset it with the other Hakkasan venues. So, like, mm-hmm. they were like, yo, if you do One Oak for this much, we can give you this much at, you know, Jewel or whatever. I don't know the, and there was the and and, and one shit. oak in Vegas is not the biggest fucking venue of all, but it gets packed. It's I mean, it's really in full. it's in a semi it's in a good hotel. Yeah. It's in a good hotel, the Mirage. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's it's, it's, on, it's on a strip. It's There's easy of, to yeah. get to, by the way, too. Yeah, the the, the drop off is right there. So the so the thing is, the question was is how does this affect the Hakkasan properties now that Tau Group opens every that yeah, Tau exactly. Group owns everything, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I was talking to a homie, and I'm like, yo, I think they're just gonna keep operating. Until they need to close a venue. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. they have the staff, the management kind of in place. You know, I think... But, they, but you know, they... Um, One Oak, they... It's, op- it's going to be open as another venue now. Yeah. I forgot well, so, the name so of it. So, One Oak was part of the deal. So, they have mm-hmm. One Oak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that what it is? I'm not sure if it has anything to do with it, but I know yeah. that... They even changed the sign. They got the sign outside the um, the um, club now. Oh. I forgot the name of it, though. I'm sorry about oh, that. Oh, is it another nightclub? It's or another. It's a cocktail lounge or some shit like that. Oh, got it, got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I don't know if that's part of Hakkasan or if that's a yeah, Mirage I'm not, I'm property. Not sure you, I think it might be a Mirage uh, That property. was my question, if that was part of the deal, because mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't hear it announced, but yeah. probably Mirage took it I over. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Because basically, One Oak, I think, was supposed to stay open even till now, mm-hmm. but COVID forced them to close. Well, no, they, no, 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 no. They, they had were, announced they, that they were done. Yeah, you were doing the last date. Yeah, they were supposed to close up before COVID. Yeah, they were they were and planning that, to close regardless. They had to shut down before they had to shut down because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Before the um, But that's what I'm saying is that they knew COVID was gonna come. No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. That was before that. They've been announced. That, yeah, this they, a while they had announced it, Kirk. Oh, yeah. really? You yeah. and you were like, I'm doing the last date. Ha, I know ha, I was ha. doing the last date, but Yeah, but it was an ongoing joke. But that 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 announcement came like two months prior to even COVID hitting oh is that yeah it mm-hmm. was prior to that they, but they must have known some shit no 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 no, no. i think they was gonna no. close it anyway no i think Fam, i'm gonna tell you no 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 i'm gonna tell you something man a lot of these executives and a lot of motherfuckers higher up higher up than us like illuminati money they already knew what the fuck was gonna happen with this uh, shit i mean that's your it's a coincidence i do know some executives that they left certain positions that yeah. is true before covid hit no, yeah. and they was, knew was really they knew to close the shit. <laughs> they knew to close that shit mm-hmm. and to close One Oak because mm-hmm. they were like, we're not going to be paying rent at that motherfucker or handling or taking care of this lease mm-hmm. when we're fucking close. And you didn't even do the last date because it got shit hit the fan. Yeah, they had to that. close before because you were doing like March twenty third or some shit like that. 22nd. I did the last date, or did it get canceled? Nah, they get canceled before. They didn't do it. Oh, it didn't, didn't get canceled. 
Because we were all going to go with you. Yeah. It was a thing that we were all going to go with you. And I think they knew, man. I think they knew. No, I mean, they had to have known. I think I'm, it was just a coincidence. No, 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 no. I'm yeah. 100% yeah. sure they did. Get rich here, keep on the phone. God damn it. I was talking with my homie, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what's going to stay open? What's going to close? Because there was room. Remember, there was rumors when uh, Tao Group was going to take over the Palms? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Marquis was in the move over there. Yeah, because their lease was up at the Cosmo. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. So then we were talking like, yo, are they going to change the names of certain venues? Like, mm-hmm. Wet Republic is going to stay Wet Republic. That, that fucking yes, so. spot. Prince That's Cash. The, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't... <laughs> Prince Cash. I don't think Marquis would change, would it? Marquis such a staple. Yeah, but Marquis... But Marquis was going to move. I don't know their situation now with Cosmo. Yeah, I think they're going to You know move. what I'm no, saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. But you think they were they were not going to change that name for sure? Well, no, I'm, I'm not talking about changing names. I'm talking about, like, moving venues to other new places. So, oh, like, okay. Tao has been at the Venetian, you know? Forever, yeah. Forever. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know what's going on with Marquis... But out of all of these clubs that are open, which one do you think is going to stay open? Which one's going to close? So I think Omni is going to stay open. I think they're all going to stay open. You think Hakkasan's going to stay open? I think they're going to stay open. You think? I think Hakkasan's going to close. You cool. think so? Mm-hmm. Why do you think that? It's too big. It's a big ass place. It's it's. But it's, it's stay it's, busy though. But it's not. I don't think it's bringing the money that they See, used I was, to bring. I was talking to like some of the hosts in Vegas. Because T- mm-hmm. remember Tiesto, all those dudes used to do that, and it used to get packed out. I don't think it has the same momentum. Well, but that's just me. It is the older club out of all of them, right? Mm-hmm. Out of Jewel, out of Omnia. Like, mm-hmm. those are kind of the newer clubs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Hakkasan is a little bit older. But I was hearing at a certain point, like in 2008 and 2019, 2018 and 2019, mm-hmm. I was hearing that there was just a big battle between these mega clubs. And that every weekend, whoever had the bigger act dominated the crowd. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like one of those things is like, do we want all of these same venues open or or can we do make more money focusing on less venues yeah you know what i'm saying with Tao mm-hmm. group yeah also i was noticing that a lot of the venues have similar lineups you know and then yeah. maybe certain certain clubs like i was just i'm just wondering because like a lot of the time when like a lot of like these um these nightlife entertainment groups when they when they when they open multiple venues mm-hmm. It kind of it's a little bit overextended it hurt sometimes. The, hurt their business a little bit. Well, it's just it's overextending it. It almost oversaturates yeah. the market, right? Exactly. Yeah. And now you have Tao Group, and they have like almost all the clubs in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And is that is that going to help? Is that going to help them or hurt them? And I was thinking it could help them a lot if they start strategically doing shit. Yeah. Well, strategically focusing on genres of music, like mm-hmm. if they did like a Latin club. If they could like completely focused on something like that at a venue or like you know, or night, yeah. because I feel like when venues open up, like I feel like one of the things that fucked up chaos was they focused on EDM and reggaeton and hip hop, mm-hmm. and it's like when it's not centralized over one genre of music, mm-hmm. yeah. I, it becomes like muddy. Yeah, and because then, one weekend right? was like Cardi B, Marshmello, and like Tiger or whatever the fuck, and it was weird. Uh, yeah, it but then like you had weird. like then you had like Bad Bunny, right? Mm-hmm. But then you're telling the DJs like you're you're you have Bad Bunny performing, and you have this whole Latin crowd coming, the reggaeton crowd coming, and you play EDM, and they're saying like don't play reggaeton, play play EDM. Yeah, yeah. So it's just weird. it was like a weird identity with things, mm-hmm. and I feel like now moving forward post COVID, mm-hmm. I feel like we can start centralizing on certain things because that seems to be where success lies, right? Yeah, yeah. like Dre's with hip hop, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like uh, the wind, all the wind properties with like EDM. Yeah, big you know, nice, like yeah. I feel like on those big weekends, when when the club has the identity for a certain music, and a certain uh, you know vibe, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like everyone just goes there. You know what I'm saying? Like if Dre's is known for hip hop, everyone's gonna go. Everyone's, everyone's, everyone's just gonna hip-hop. go there. Whether it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, or whenever they're fucking open, people are gonna go there expecting hip hop. Hip hop or not? You, you, yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? So like, like I'm gonna you expect EDM. Right. And in the heart room, you expect the hip hop. So I think if they have all of these clubs and they centralize on certain genres of music or vibes of, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like that, that'll that be really dope for the city. Oh, yeah, I think so. Because yeah, then, like, I you know, you can no, send definitely. people here, like, yo, go to this spot. Mm-hmm. You know, they play, like, they play hip hop and, like, oh, oh, like, yo, there's an old school spot. Like, yo, they play nothing but classics and all of that shit. Mm-hmm. This is that, like, that, that night where they kill it on that. Yeah. But they, I feel like there's no identity for shit. So then it just, like, people would come out of town and be like, where should I go? I'm like, dude, I don't really, I don't really know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you have, like, open format DJs here. 
but I don't know if they're gonna play more EDM. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Depending what the crowd says. You know, and then I don't know if th- this dude's gonna play more hip hop there. So it's like it becomes like really muddy now, mm-hmm. and I feel like the music is so segregated. I don't. I know. mean, but before COVID, I feel like all these EDM DJs started playing, embracing hip hop a little bit more and playing it more. Yeah, yeah, there was definitely a turn so, at that point. But. It was like a smidgen of it though, and they were, they were only doing that because there were no actual EDM songs that were crossing over. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. right. Yeah. That was like six on months, the charts, yeah, so they like had six. to take the bigger songs that were on the charts. Mm-hmm. Like the hip hop songs that were on the charts, yeah, and they had to, you know, modify put, put them it, for put into their set, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But that was like six to eight months prior to pandemic happening. But yeah, that was definitely happening because it was very hip hop in 2019. Yeah, but I think yeah, they, I think you do have a, a great take on that, Crook. I think and they would focus like Jewel just being a hip hop club. I think that would help them out a lot. But Jewel was playing all hip hop. Not really. Not like really. they would play EDM. Like they would play EDM when you went there. You know. Yeah. On Mondays it was weird. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if they would focus strictly hip hop on that, that would probably work out. And Omnia and Hakusan are kind of alike, but they're kind of two different places on the strip. I think there needs to also be a conversation with these big rooms and the lighting guys and the DJs. They need to work together, because some of these these rooms, like the DJs, felt obligated to play uh, EDM because of the lighting. Because of the lighting. And mm-hmm. because of the cryo, and because we've had this conversation, where like they got to the, show off the the, the, the cryo. Well, when fucking. you're in a big ass room like that, right? You want to yeah. make it a show, and yeah. I totally get that. But the thing is, you have to coordinate like with the lighting guy and the DJs. Like, yo, these hip hop songs are big. Mm-hmm. Start doing those those big light shows, yeah, and those big presentations for these songs. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Instead of me having to force in and shovel EDM down the crowd's throat. Just so we could have, you know, c- confetti fall and like cryo. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's something that I would like to see. It's just like a little bit more conversation of that. Like like the DJs working with the lighting guys. Because, yo, it's so important, man. Especially when you're in a big ass room like that. Mm-hmm. Where the lighting guys and the, and, the, and the DJs are working together, yo. Especially and like ev- an Omnia and fam, a fucking hawker song. Every venue that I've ever DJed at, when the lighting guy is working together with the DJ, they fucking murder it, bro. They not, murder it. Not to bring them yeah. back up, but One Oak, the lighting guy, One Oak, is really, really good. He would work with you really well. When when he was DJ. also so close yeah. to the DJ. And He's right next to you. There's something about that when they're working close together like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and he mm-hmm. knew and he knew the hip-hop moments, and he knew the songs that were going to explode. Right. And he did all that shit. So like, that's uh, why he was great. The Heart of Omnia. Another like one. that side room yeah. mm-hmm. where the lighting guy would be right next to the DJ. Another yeah. one, yeah. And I could communicate with him like, yo, black it out when I drop this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'd be like, yo, black it out and when I drop like, this. You're throwing signals back and forth. Yeah, right. I remember that. Those, especially, yeah, those two rooms, you work great with those. I would black guys. it out and I would shut the music off. I would talk on the mic and then I would drop it and he would know like, yo, I got to hit him. And I'd be like, yo, hit him, hit him. Yeah. And when he hit him, boom. And it would just be like magic. It would like be magic, bro. But like it has to go back to that because when when the lighting guy and the DJ are communicating, it's just, it's like, it's off, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain it. It's just not. No, yeah. They should be next to each other or over. The lighting guy should be looking over the DJ. Because that's what uh, Drace has it at. Drace has the, the lighting yeah. guy looking over. And it still, it still works perfectly. But, it's great. But he, he knows the music. And he knows the moments. And, you know, he knows the DJs that work in there. So. And by the way, we're speaking mm-hmm. about Tau Group, you know, mm-hmm. in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. The Palms is actually... The rumor is the Palms is getting bought out. Oh yeah, yeah, that was. I the, think yeah. that's done already. Yeah, I think they're getting bought by yeah. a Native Amer- uh, Native American uh, company. San yeah. Manuel. San Manuel Band remember, of Mission Indians. You guys probably don't remember this. Is not remember when I said I had a Native American friend. Yeah, yeah. He owns part of that. I'm not surprised. Oh really? Yeah, he owns part <laughs> of the San Manuel <laughs> Casino. Oh really? Yeah. So they're a casino from Cali, right? Yeah, they're yeah. They're from uh, right there by the 15 and the 215. It's it's a uh, Redlands area, so yeah. Yo, they they just dropping that and Native they, American they, and they own they bought out um the Virgin. They, they <laughs> it's, it's, a Virgin hotel. it's a different Native the American. old Hard Rock Hotel. Yeah, yeah, it's a different group that owned the 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 Mohegan Suns. Mohegan Suns, yeah. The but they uh, Seminole Casino is very known yeah, in LA. Yeah. In LA, and they have a lot of yeah. Yo, they, Native America's taking over Las Vegas. It's good. What's yeah, good? Man. Yeah, that's really What's good. good. I did text him. I said, you just going to buy fucking the Palms on a regular Wednesday? <laughs> He's like, I'm on the boat. I'll text you later. I was like, all oh, right. Wow. <laughs> I would have flexed. <laughs> Shout out to Kenny. I'm on the boat. Yeah. I'm on the boat. Um, yo, that's, it's dope. It's, it's like dope. new blood. New blood, it's right? Be, yeah. 
And uh, the so the Mohegan Sun owns Virgin Hotel, which is the old Hard Rock Hotel. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mohegan Sun is based out of um, Connecticut. Is it yeah, I, I think it's one of the biggest casinos in the East Coast. Yeah, yeah it's Connecticut. Yeah, it's the biggest casino in the East Coast. Mm-hmm. So with them being behind Virgin, I know Virgin. Some of the so there's venues out there that hasn't opened up yet. Yeah, yeah. but Maddie Salazar is behind it. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to open a club out there um, in that hotel, right? Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, I think it's a. Uh, is it gonna be the um? I'm not the sure. old body English, the old what it, is it? the vanity, vanity. yeah, vanity, yeah. 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 Maddie Salazar is behind it. Uh-huh. And um, then the, the DJ, gen- I think DJ Jersey's behind it too. What's the gentleman that that had? I'm not Apex? sure. But they, I think they got a shop out. They they got money in the shop, a clothing store. Oh, are they? Jersey, yeah. Oh, okay. That's what that is. I don't know about the nightclub, but oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. But uh, and but, then the gentleman that had Apex, I think they're doing something down there too. I forget the, uh, J Rock and oh yeah, J Rock and Ryan, Ryan, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of things. yo. There's a lot of shit opening up. Mm-hmm. So you have Virgin, you have venues at the Virgin, mm-hmm. the Palms. I don't know if anything's gonna happen this year, maybe next year. Mm-hmm. But then you have a uh, Resort World, right? Yeah, across the a new hotel the wind. right mm-hmm. across from the Wind that's gonna open with new property. It's opening in July. That motherfucker's huge, bro. Isn't yeah. one of the venues uh, at the Resorts World? Didn't they sign Tiesto? They signed Tiesto and Zed. And Zed. Yeah. And I think Katy Perry too. Well, oh, yes. before for performance, they got Celine Dion and Katy Perry. Katy Perry. Um, who else? A couple of more acts, but it's gonna be like a big, big, big club, right? A big hotel when it opens up. It, well, it's a huge fucking place. It's like its own little world, right? It's fucking big, bro. It's it's at least I want to say that's opening this year. I yeah, say, that's say um July, yeah, July first. Yeah. Maybe a, a mile of a block, maybe less than that. Damn, I forgot Usher's gonna be at Caesars too. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. wow. I'm gonna, see, I'm gonna yeah. see Usher for sure. Yeah. Usher at Caesars, and then you have Omnia at Caesars. Yes, Omnia's going to be popping. Sting is signed a residency at Caesars also. Yep. That's cool. I'm a big, <laughs> I'm a big Sting fan in police. I, I like Sting, too. He's not Usher. I'm sorry. He's, he got he got Flex. every breath he takes. Yeah. And, and Roxanne. <laughs> He'll bring out the police with him. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Uh, what do you call it? I want to give And then a, we also... Oh, oh go ahead. We, uh, we still talk about venues. Yeah. You got Stadium Swim. That opened yeah, up in Circa. In Circa. Circa. In Circa. Yeah, we yeah. talked about them though. Yeah, know, in yeah. downtown. Las but it's Vegas. like yeah, but it's but doing it's great huge, business right bro. now. Yeah, it's humongous. Shout to Circa. Um, we I want to give a shout to to Rhino. They kind of opened. They had an event <laughs> at four twenty, right? Yeah. yeah, we was at. It was there. like a party. Yeah, uh-huh. I was like our first time back at Rhino. Yeah, Oof. shout to Spearman Rhino. <laughs> yeah, shout, to shout to Zach, Zach Mark, Mark, James, all the homies over there. Yep. Yo, like. It was it was weird, right? Being inside, it felt really weird, man. Yeah, I felt. And, very and people odd. was like really comfortable. They wasn't wearing masks. I, I kept my mask on the whole time I was there. What well, kind of? Except, you, for, you, you except got, when I was drinking, you got when caught up. You were just like, "Fuck this mask." <laughs> at a certain point. Nah, when I had to die. Nah, other, <laughs> other than when I was drinking, but when I wasn't drinking, yeah, I had my mask on the whole time. Where, this he was is, like, "Fuck the mask." Yeah, nah, nah I he that. was living it up. <laughs> Come here, girl. Don't say that, man. <laughs> yo, yo, you don't want disappear for like a. There we hour. go. <laughs> he was like, "Where's Cricket?" <laughs> you lying? I ain't lying. <laughs> Wait, <are> you. <laughs> was with, I was with Eddie. He's like Eddie Mac. He's like, "Yo, where's Cricket?" <laughs> nah, 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 nah. He was making sure everybody. I was, was hanging out with the Sandal Boys. No, before oh, that. Shout out to them. I was hanging out with you with them, but before that, you oh, no, no, I was for, talking. I was talking yeah, with some of the dancers in the yeah. back room, man. No. <laughs> Nah. Okay. You crazy. I'm not like I'm not, right. I had my mask on. I was talking no, I wanted to talk about this. I was talking it's weird because like I haven't seen like I saw Shreds shout out to DJ Shred. Mm-hmm. Uh great DJ. He's also uh he DJs the Derby, right? Those parties yeah, with the roller back. skates mm-hmm. in downtown Las Vegas. Shout I talked to Shred. Uh I saw Sandal Boys, shout out to Sandal Boys. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh M- Mikey wasn't there, shout out to you, Mikey. Um, five was there. He was DJing. Marsky was there. Yeah. Um, I we missed friends uh, right. W- Will was there. Will was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, what do you call Shred introduced me to Bonix, which is Wiz oh, Khalifa's shout, DJ. Yeah, shout to Bonix. Mm-hmm. But I was yeah, he was saying, DJing yeah. when we got there, right? Oh, oh, was he DJing? He was DJing. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. All right. So like, I was uh, I was introduced to Bonix. Yeah. But I was talking with the Rhino strippers, right? Some like the ones I'm <laughs> in, homies in the with. Back room, right? Shout no. to Cookie. <laughs> Well, it was one. It was the. It was the. It I was, know what you're talking about. <laughs> it was the dancer. It was the dancer who I interviewed last year. Oh yeah, the one the, from uh, what is it called? Uh, yeah, from the pandemic. Pa- yeah, I forget the name of the episode. Qu- uh, Quarantine, Quarantine Chronicles. Chronicles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I interviewed her. But I, I was catching up with her, and she works with her sister. Her sister works there, too. Mm. Mm-hmm. And we were, But we were having, like, because we haven't seen each other in so long, like, yeah. all the conversations she gave we you a free having, lap dance? No. Oh, okay. I'm saying all the conversations <laughs> we had... See, I'm trying to be like on some real shit. Like you guys, you're a strip jokes. club, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> One of your favorite places of all things, <laughs> right? Oh, I'm having an intellectual you just, conversation. You just stay after I left early, and you still stay behind. Nah, really? I, like, I asked this motherfucker, yo, how long were you there? <laughs> I stayed for 15. I wasn't like D. Yo, D, you remember you was there, right? Yo, D was <laughs> over there. D was there until six in the morning, right? D, he was there to six. Oh, he did. In the morning. I seen the Fam, light. I, mean, I left 20 minutes after you left. Uh huh. But D was there till six and six in the morning. <laughs> he was there. Six in the morning. But now I was saying I was we haven't seen motherfuckers in so long. So yeah. all the conversation was deep. Mm-hmm. I was having deep conversations with the strippers. More than you with usual. these dancers, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shout out to them. But they were kind of scaring me too, man. They were saying some crazy shit. You wanna elaborate on one of I was just be like, yo, how have y'all been? Uh-huh. I think the George Floyd verdict just came through. And we were talking about that. It was like a lot of deep shit. I was and then we were even like, yo, we had fucking we had a strip club talking about all of this, yeah. this conscious socialized shit. Yeah. And then before, before, like, midway in the conversation, one of the dancers was like, yo, you know this COVID shit ain't real, right? Woo! <laughs> and I was like, yo, I can't have this conversation. That's when you too. exit the conversation. Yeah, I was like, yo, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> let's, let's do this, let's do a shot, and I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> Quickie, line them up. Yo, but oh, me man. and Bonix had a, a deep, like, it's my first time meeting Bonix. Mm-hmm. Great dude. Really mm-hmm. great dude. Good DJ too. Great DJ. Made me feel a little bit bad about some of the some of the stuff we said about Wiz Khalifa's music. Uh, <laughs> did you tell him this? No. no, no, no. We, we gotta get I don't him know on. what episodes, but we can I, edit those, right? I never <laughs> dissed Wiz Khalifa. <laughs> we never dissed Wiz Khalifa, did we? You call this music weird. No. Yeah. Don't say that. I didn't say it was weird. You I said did. his verse on the Furious, the Fast and Furious but song. See you, see you again. We see just that song. I mean, yeah, we just yeah. that song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we like work hard. I think there was maybe a freestyle. I said black was and a yellow, si- black and yellow. Yes, we no. Like I said I think yeah. Oh, um, it was over the Snoop Dogg. Dude. It was a freestyle that yeah. I was a little questionable. <laughs> but anyway, yes. trust the Bonix. <laughs> <laughs> but Bonix Taylor yo, Gang. It's a great dude, man. I feel like I've never really connected Aww. to you know. Yeah, no, it's one of those moments, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, man, it's like I knew him for twenty years. Now we had a deep ass conversation about you know, just like a month, like the like the pandemic, like forcing motherfuckers to kind of act their age a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because like we get older, you know, like we're part of the rat race, and we just keep going and going and going, and then you just don't kind of just realize like, yo, you don't take a, a step back. And look and be like, yo, I'm still moving like I'm in my 20s or like early 30s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I don't know, we had a great conversation. I I, I want to talk about it a little bit more. Maybe I want to definitely have him on the podcast. Definitely have him on, yeah. Great fuck. We, we had a deep conversation, but we were talking about how easy it is. And then I started talking with you and Eddie about it afterwards yeah. a little bit. Mm-hmm. How easy it is. Like a lot of DJs are single, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like they never get married or like... A lot of my homies that are DJs aren't married. There's like a yeah. very few, like maybe five, ten percent of them are I married. Say ten percent, yeah. Mm-hmm. About 10. But a lot of them are single. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm just saying, like, yo, DJs, we're so good at being alone. Which is scary, oh, man. Yeah, it is. Right? Yeah. It's really like, scary. Yeah. We're so good at being alone. Mm-hmm. It's 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 crazy. Yeah. And it's like it's we're so used to being alone that even if we're in a good relationship. We're we can just be like, yo, we'll, we'll spot any red flag, right? Mm-hmm. Or we'll make a red flag, or if it seems like we're about to not be alone, or if it, like we have to sacrifice, you know, some of the freedom we have from being alone, mm-hmm. we'll sabotage that relationship. We'll just be like, yo, I can always go back to being alone. I'm cool with that, you know. Yeah, like, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But but then it's like we lose out on all these relationships because we don't want to make that sacrifice, right? Because yeah. we're so good. At being alone, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I and the two tests was this um, pandemic, <laughs> <laughs> being by yourself and like for a whole year and shit. Isn't this scary? Yeah, man. But we were talking, right? We could have mm-hmm. done the pandemic another year or two. Yeah, exactly. that's the scary shit. Yep, yeah. I could have kept going. Yep, yeah, me too. <laughs> that shit is nuts. But yeah, it's crazy. I mean, obviously, I miss my family, my mother, and shit like that. No, but you could be alone. Mm-hmm. The, the the fact that we can sit there by ourselves and just. 
not have anything in front of ourselves. You can keep going. It's like, yeah. Just keep going. It's scary I don't know if there's some New York shit. I don't no, know. No, 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 there's yeah. DJs in the West Coast that are all single. That are, I, even growing up, I never seen somebody have a relationship. I think the only person that I knew at the time was probably Vice, that had a wife and kids and stuff like that. Yeah. But other than that, like you know, not to diss anybody else, but yeah, there was no like. Everything was like the DJ in the moment and having that prime. Yeah. And then I never saw what happened after that till I saw Vice get married and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And But yeah, other than that, I think even now I see it even more. It's crazy. There's a few people that have kids and, and stuff like that, like Zach, um, uh, Scene and right, stuff right. like that. But it's a, no, it's it's a, it's it's a scary it's thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm, I know, a, yeah. It's a scary I thing know, to even man. visualize as a, and you know, I, coming up and seeing this shit happen. You're like, yeah. damn, I don't, you know, I never even, end I up never like even thought about it till you brought it up the other day. And <laughs> I'm just like, wow, yeah. You were kind of pissed I brought it up, right? <laughs> no, nah, I wasn't pissed with it. I just realized, like, damn, man, yeah, I could definitely go keep going by myself. Right. Yeah. At some point, which is you not have good. To, it's not a good yeah. thing, man. Well, I mean, I mean, it's it good. Is, it's a good thing, but it's... You could survive, but still, you, do you really want to be like that? You want you don't want to be by yourself. Yeah. You're just comfortable knowing how to live by yourself. And you don't want to break your rules and bring in somebody well, else. Well, you're just in. so... Uh, you're just so... It be, just becomes a routine, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when you're living with somebody or you have a relationship, it just interrupts that. Yeah. And then you either deal with it till it gets to a breaking point where mm-hmm. you're just like, uh, I can go back to being alone. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And or try to work it out, and just or try to work it out, make some sacrifice. Exactly. But I feel yeah. like you know, at a certain point, you just gotta have, you gotta make the sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this past year, you know, a lot of self reflection happened, and I was realizing, like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's about time we start moving a little different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And not like not moving like we were in our early 30s late 20s mm-hmm. and literally start you know making these changes and making these sacrifices yeah, the right yeah. Yeah. yeah but yo I, w- I want to get into that convo with Bonix though because we had a dope I don't know if he wants to have it on the podcast but either way Bonix thank you for that convo that was a that was a dope convo we were having no that's definitely something to reflect even yeah. the, the younger generation coming up behind you guys I'm like damn like some of these dudes yeah we want to become the great DJs they were and, and establish ourselves but also, it's like it's a bad thing that they did. Well, not a bad thing, but it's just a bad habit that happened. Yeah. Do I need to be alone for that long for in order to be this successful, or how do I break that curse? Well, like we were talking about this a little bit, right? Because we were we were saying like a lot of younger DJs, you know, like they're doing their thing, mm-hmm. like you know, they're posting their their you know their, their, their monthly their um, monthly schedule schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they're they're getting gigs. Mm-hmm. They're doing all of these things. Which they're they're dope, blowing which is great. up. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I was telling Nev, I'm like, yo, like, this is dope that you know this generation kind of this generation this newer generation of DJs mm-hmm. are starting to like do their fucking thing. Mm-hmm. And I think the worst shit is I was talking to a homie who's around my age, maybe a little bit older. He still sees them as like competition. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, you can't see these motherfuckers as competition. I was gonna you know? ask you guys yeah. that. Do you guys see that as competition? Like nah, man. Man. I think at, at this point, I don't see it as competition. Yeah, it was man. like passing the baton type of shit. I mean, I don't think there's a baton to be passed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think I, there is. Yeah, I don't think I passed anything to anybody. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, you're yeah. leading by example. You're the you're yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's not baton like, but you know what I mean? It's right, right, right. Next generation mm-hmm. from. What you got it from, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. I mean, yeah, I think me. You but know. you guys don't see the younger generation as a uh, as a competition. You guys more see it, you embrace it, and you're like. I think when you start getting in your late thirties, you do start seeing uh, motherfuckers like in their late twenties and early thirties mm-hmm. as competition because you're you're starting to be like, I'm getting older. You know what I'm saying? So like, I think it probably happened for me years ago, where I was kind of competing with motherfuckers but like where i'm at right now i'm just happy for motherfuckers because honestly i don't want to move like that like i don't even know if i could move like that where i could do uh three gigs in one day Mm -hmm. or if i could travel Mm -hmm. three three days in a row yeah you know what i'm saying like i don't even know if i could move like that and after this pandemic you know i'm not sure if i want to move like that no yeah so that that's kind of like when i look at them like i'm like yo get it yo go get them man you know like i'm happy for them yeah 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 yeah. it's like and it's one of those things where I kind of think like, yo, if we had the social media we have right right now, mm-hmm. I don't know if we'd be even more obnoxious than them. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we would, but maybe no, we would. I don't would. think so. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Actually, when I think about some of the pictures we took 
on like Smile Vegas. No, I it was yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. Seen some <laughs> I've seen some pictures yep. of y'all. That's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But I, I mean, it's it's interesting. Smile Vegas. <laughs> yeah, because I was looking at, I was talking to my homie. I'm like, yo, why are you seeing them as competition? Like they're 20 years younger than you, or like 15 to 20 yeah, man. years younger been than like you. Like 10. Yeah, 10 to 15, 20 years younger than you. Like, And they're different style and they're different DJs than you, which you are. Yeah, yeah. It's basically it. Um, but, yo, public service announcement to all the DJs, mm-hmm. with, with shit sl- slowly starting to open up. You know, I was I was thinking about this myself, and I was talking with uh, some homies about this, too. You know, now's the time to update your, your writers, your bios, your photos, mm-hmm. get some new Website. photos. Yeah. Look at your Instagram feed. Maybe like kind of control it a little bit. Archive some shit. Look at your Twitter feed. Maybe you know delete some of those tweets. You know get you know what I'm saying like it's time to get the uh, because uh, a homie at uh, at the win who's the sound guy at the win he Matt, hit me up and Matty, he's like Mattyo 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 I love Mattyo he yeah. hit me up he's like yo he got my writer. He's like, yo, you haven't changed this writer since like 2012. Did I meet him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the guy. Who he was there. Shouts to him. He listens to the podcast. So he was like, yo, man, you got to update this writer because you're still asking for like uh, a Pioneer 900 and shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Fucking loser. And I was like, yo, yeah, I got to update this shit. And I was like mm-hmm. thinking about it. I was like, yo, I got to update a whole bunch of other shit. So mm-hmm. now's the time. Friendly reminder. Start getting back to work. Literally start, you know, put a new look for yourself and and. Create an identity that's going to make you more bookable, I guess. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, do what you got to do, man. I'm going to update my bio and update some shit um, and whatnot. But, you know, just you're a good. Reminder. You're pretty good on Twitter, though. Huh? You don't have to do a spring cleaning on Twitter. You're pretty good. I, I haven't think- been on socials too much recently just yeah, because I've been, been working on some other shit. I can't. Mm-hmm. Honestly, man, I really want to talk about it. No, you have to save it. I'll I have do, to save I'll it. I'll edit it for you. I would not let you speak it. I don't, it's, know, it's, I don't fuck with Twitter too much, man. I love me and him love Twitter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> me and this motherfucker just be on Twitter. I it's, feel like Twitter's. I don't love Twitter. You mm-hmm. love Twitter. I don't. You love Twitter. I actually you hate love Twitter. Twitter. I feel no, you, you love that you, shit, man. I don't you love interact it. more on Twitter than anything else. Yeah, no, man. I don't. Come no, always on there, man. Cook it. You're always on there, fam. I'm not on there. I'm not on there like that where I'm like I'm like you know. Shut the fuck up. No, 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 no. You're on Twitter more than Instagram. I go on Twitter. And I look at news or I look at what's going yeah. on. Everybody does yeah, that. That's yeah, that's what everybody but does. You, yeah, I'm not but saying you tweet. You, you out there, you post this shit, man. Not too no, no, much. No, no, no. Not like that. Not like that. Not crazy. Not I mean, like not that. crazy, but you are out there posting. You I, I see something and I'm like, yo. Oh, you respond back to a certain. This is the way I approach Twitter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some things like I see and I'm like, I question it. But if I'm not ready to engage and have a conversation about it, I hold back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I draft a lot of shit that I oh, write. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Me too. So, like, the problem with, with Twitter is that I'm not like these other motherfuckers that just puts shit out there because I don't have 45 minutes to reply yeah, back I, to I don't want to go back and, and forth back and, and have a back and forth with So that's why I have it with certain, with certain shit. Like, I'm like, okay, you know what? I don't mind getting into it with this shit. But I ain't gonna try to get into it with this other shit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but you do yeah. love Twitter. That doesn't mean you're, you, you indulge in it too much. You just like it for the news. And the quick response of what happens in the world. I mean, but everyone it's, does that. Yeah. But I feel like shit yeah. hits Twitter before it even hits Way, Instagram. It yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, like, yeah, fuck, I fuck with Twitter heavy. Um, before we continue, though, we, we, you know, we're a little late with this. Uh, but we have to uh, give a rest in peace and pay homage to Shock G. I mean, that one, yeah. Greg, that one Gregory bro. Jacobs. Mm-hmm. That one hurt a lot. Yeah. Humpty, Humpty Hump. Humpty yeah, Hump. Yeah. That one hurt a lot. So sad. Yeah. Honestly, like, I, you know, I didn't know he did the artwork for all the yeah, digital underground I, I, shit. I didn't know that either, man. He's just such a talented motherfucker. Like, yeah, he was a jack of all trades, man. Because the artwork was so great, man. Yeah, I thought Tommy Boy had something to do with that, yeah. honestly. Yo, speaking of Tommy Boy, man, like, uh, like signing to Tommy Boy in the 90s was like, I don't know what that's like. It's like the most fucked up situation for everybody, mm-hmm. yo. Mm-hmm. Like, all the artists are going through it right now. I mean, not. I mean, they're not getting the money they should be getting from Tommy Boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they, Tommy Boy still like they're not streaming their music. Yeah, yeah. De La Soul's the biggest one on there, right? Yo, when De La yeah. starts, uh, they got to do something with De La, man. I know. Yeah. yeah. The the thing is, when De La is on streaming platforms, or I don't know when that glorious day is gonna be. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, De La it's, and Aaliyah, <laughs> those are the two biggest acts that in hip hop I think that are not on streaming. Wait, so you can't listen to Humpty Dance on streaming platforms? Yes, you can. 
That's you a gotta good be question. Able. You know what? That's a really good question, but I think um, no, you definitely should be able to. You know what? I think Tommy Boy was bought out by a company. It was right. Yeah, There's, but somehow the contract that Dallas Soul had with Tommy Boy. Yeah, that didn't go through. That didn't go through. That's no. and they can't get. Yeah, that because money. you got jump around. Jump around's on Tommy yeah, Boy. Exactly, right? Yeah, exactly. How many dances on there? Yeah, yeah, it's on there. It is. It's only De La. It's only Dela. They couldn't work that out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. because of the samples. Yeah, but, but I don't think it's the samples. But I don't think um, Digital Underground got money from. Um, the streaming service. Oh, mm. they got blocked I out. Think, I feel like Tommy Boy got all that money. Damn, fuck. Well, the only thing is also there's not much money in streaming. But I think any, any anything helps when you're not like yeah. a relevant it's, artist it, doing shit. Exactly, like, man. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, can we talk about a little bit about Shock G? Of course. He was just responsible for finding Tupac. <laughs> right, yeah. Because Tupac was their uh, original road manager back in the days before he was a rapper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's funny they just brought him on to like be a roadie yeah mm -hmm. to like uh, unload equipment exactly yeah. yeah but Shock G was just so open like he was just so free like uh, there's this we're gonna put this uh, link in the, in the description mm -hmm. definitely check this out if you wanna learn more about Shock G because I learned a shit ton about Shock G from this Vibe article mm -hmm. it's this Vibe article uh, written by Keith Murphy um, and it just said so much about just hints his like you know, it had um, Shock G explaining how he made get around, made the I beat. Didn't, I didn't know he was originally from New York. Yeah. He moved out to um, the West Coast where he was like in his teens. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that at all. This all that all these jewels in that in that article mm -hmm. about him. Yeah. Uh, making I get around and Tupac writing his verse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, he had he had to do it that same night because they were about to mix the album next day. It's yeah, just yeah. crazy. I mean it's it's do it his crazy break, shit. I think the breakdown where he like he broke down people's flows. I don't know if you guys seen that video. There's a I video, that, yeah. yeah. He, he broke says, down the Biggie's and Tupac flow, and and his his flow with uh, uh, Slick Rick and and Nas's flow. And I'm just like, damn, I never thought about all that shit. Mm. Like he's like, yeah, Nas raps from the back of his throat, and then yeah. Humpty Dance rhymes from the uh, the no, the nasal ballad. Yeah, and I'm like, Jesus, the shit that this guy was just so intellectual about, even down to the flows, and then explaining how Biggie's flow is like, he's a swinger, and I'm like, damn. It's gonna, he's going to be missed. Yo, Still, I man. feel like um, Digital Underground, when Humpty Dance came out, that was like one of the first um, West Coast rap, I mean, West Coast artists to get played in New York on primetime radio. Because, of Damn. course, you had NWA, but they wasn't getting no play because they, right. this shit was so explicit. Nobody's right. really fucking Ice-T in New York like that. Mm -hmm. Not even Supersonic? Not even Supersonic, no. Damn. It was all right, but it, I mean, you also had Tone Loke and you had, um, bus, um, what was that, Buster Move? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Young MC. Young MC, MC, but it wasn't like, that wasn't like real hip hop. Like, hip hop heads wasn't feeling that. But when Humpty Dance came out, everybody was, was fucking big. with that shit. Yeah. That's the shit, man. I remember practicing that, shit that was dance. That shit, man. Yeah. I actually went to the album release party in New York. <laughs> That's when, really? they, when they dropped that album. At the time, I was interning at um, 98.7 Kiss FM. Mm. And that was like one of the first industry parties I went to. It was weird because I wasn't sure if it was a joke. Or if it was real. No, the like thing the, was, you know? a lot of people didn't really they didn't know. They thought Humpty, Humpty Hump and Shark G was two different yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, insane. we all yeah. thought it was yeah, two man. different people. Oh, mm -hmm. I thought, never mind, sorry. You go ahead. No, what, what, what you, you thought? What you were saying? I thought uh, people, when there was a joke about him passing away, if the news was true because people thought he was two different people. Oh, no, we, we thought oh, the hum no. when, when, the, when I first heard the Humpty dance and I saw the video, mm -hmm. I thought it was a joke. I was like, what? Like, well, what is he, this? He looks like a parody. And then with his voice, like, yo, my name is Humpty. And like, and the lyrics were just like playful. Oh, you know? they're fun. And then he had people thinking that was his real nose. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that nah, instead, instead of glasses, that, that, nah, that nah. his nose was like fucked up. That he got burned or some shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a rumor burn. going around that his nose got burned. His, like nose got <laughs> burned off or yeah, something. Some yeah, some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> nah, Humpty Dance was the shit, man. I that, remember seeing "Do What You man. Like" the video and uh -huh. being blown away. I was yeah. like, "Yo, I want to do. A pool. I want to be at a pool party like that." Yeah. And see, he did a the Vibe article even broke that down how they just went to a hotel mm -hmm. to, and took it over for three days mm -hmm. and partied yeah. for three days and, and they just, and just filmed, filmed it. it yeah and that was the Do What You Like video yep it was it's it's really a great read like uh, check the description link mm -hmm. it's down below yeah it's it's really like probably one of the best reads I've 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 you had yeah mm -hmm. it just went so in depth in in everything that he did yeah. Fuck it all down. Yeah. R.I.P. Shark G, man. Yeah. Damn, Th man. There's also a video where he's giving love to like Premier. Have you seen that I one? I saw that one, yeah. That was so sad, man. Like yeah. when I see Shark G now, I instantly get sad because he just seemed like such a fucking open, loving dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Like 
I just I get sad when I see him. I get sad when I see Chadwick, uh, Black Chad, Panther, Chadwick yeah. Boseman. I get, and I get sad when I see Gigi. We were talking about Gigi this earlier. Yeah. I just I instantly get sad when I see those like, motherfuckers. Oh. Nah, yeah. But it's yeah, been a rough year, man. Especially for rappers that for my generation. Shit. Yeah. That's, that's In the last dying, month man. alone. Yeah, man. Fam, I was like, I was thinking at the parties. It's like, yo, remember we'd be like, rest in peace, Tupac. Put your, you know, yeah, put nah. your drink up in the air for Tupac. You play a Tupac song. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there's too many rest in pieces know, in the man. club. Yeah, man. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's coming out, man. Dude, it is. It's, it's like, yo, Shock, rest in peace, Shock, Shock G. G. Yo, Black Rob, rest in peace, DMX. Yeah, everybody put them ets up in the air right now. Yeah. Charlie, that's going to be a moment. The, the, night, <laughs> the, the, night cups, moment. the nightclubs are going to be like a memorial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers so, gonna be like, yo, I heard, I heard eight rest in pieces tonight. I know, right? Motherfuckers need to chill. With yeah, you gotta do a check checklist of make sure you don't miss anybody. Rest in peace, shorty low. Ew. It just goes shorty on. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Dun, it's getting dun, a little dun. crazy though. I right? know, man. Yeah, yeah, man. We gotta, the, we gotta relax. Chill with the rest in pieces, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> just, just, just play this song and be like, yo, <laughs> enjoy the music. That man. would be dope if we get a whole crowd to do the X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Night club though, I gotta give motherfucking props. We play Rough Riders anthem. Be like. Shut the music down. Everybody put their X's up in the air right now. Yeah. Rest in peace, TMX. The whole, the whole crowd will go doing this shit. <laughs> Make them bark. <laughs> everyone, everyone go. Arf, arf. <laughs> <laughs> Where <are> my dogs at? <laughs> so wait, before we end this episode, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And you know, I want to end this on, <laughs> <laughs> on a good note. Wait, no, I have questions. Oh, like okay. charisma, I got questions. I got questions. So. so I don't know if y'all been on Twitch in the past month or so. Probably like the past few months. No, I think it's more than that. Because we, we right. brief, me and you briefly spoke about this. I haven't been on ago. Twitch, right, mm-hmm. uh, too too often. Mm-hmm. But I see y'all DJs, y'all killing this shit. Mm-hmm. But when I was on Twitch, like kind of checking it out once in a while, on the recommended channels, right, the, uh, like these girls in bikinis in hot tubs would start popping up. Mm-hmm. Like these half-naked shorties. Would start popping up. I mean, you would see it like if you go on Twitch, that'd be like the, yeah, um, like the front page. The front page, yeah. You when you go to front page, there's like these these girls in bikinis, or I don't know if they could do lingerie, but like they're definitely in bikinis mm-hmm. or by the pool. Yeah, they're like half naked. Damn, they're, never. <laughs> they're, they're, they're on a bed. They're on their bed, and it's. I've it, seen the ones by the pool, but so the, the category, <laughs> the category, the category um, in Twitch, like just chatting, right? Just there's chatting. a just That's, chatting yeah. category. And then these girls, I'm so this is what I'm thinking. These girls were gamers, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's there's like you know there is a who's who watches Twitch like teenager guys, it's, it's right? A, it's yeah, a teenager. Teenagers. I heard eighty yeah. to eighty five percent of the viewership on Twitch is all male. I, I, believe, yeah. I could believe it. I right? love boys yeah. and men. Yeah. So there's these gamer girls that obviously you know there's a huge market for good looking. You know, gamer girls, kind of like scantily clad, wearing you know, little, you know, little, showing some skin, yeah, yeah, yeah. but playing video games. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then there was a gamer girl who just kind of was like, "Yo, I'm just gonna stop playing games because it looks like motherfuckers just want to talk to me." Mm-hmm. So she just started talking with the with the with the crowd with the viewers, so, and then she just started being like, "Yo, why don't I just just do different shit?" Like she started like. <laughs> Like, like if for like she'd have this breakdown. Like if you if you if you subscribe if you do like a five month subscription, I'm gonna write your name on my body. Oh, so she like she just started racking in subscriptions <laughs> with motherfuckers because she's writing her their name on her body, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know, she's writing it on her stomach, mm-hmm. above her her titties, and all of this shit. Yes. And then she's like, yo, what if I was in a hot tub? So she got like a uh, what do you call it? like like a blow up hot tub. Yeah. Or a blow up tub, like a water, like 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 a, like a kiddie pool, like a kiddie pool, like a kiddie pool. Mm-hmm. Blew it up. Put it in her living room, and was just oh, in man. the pool in the kiddie pool with with a bikini on, and she got like six thousand views or ten thousand <laughs> views. Christ! And she was just racking shit in. This is like a visual hot. Wow! So you know how it is, right? Like these other shorties started seeing like, yo, that works. That works. Yeah, they wouldn't get in on it. They getting in on it. So all this, there's all these like hot tub girls, these mm-hmm. girls in hot tubs all over Twitch. Mm-hmm. They're probably like, oh, I look better than her. <laughs> so I'll make more money. Yeah. And then now these game, these gamer girls are upset. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me play this real quick. During a recent live stream, streamer Cutie Cinderella was caught off guard when someone in her chat randomly asked her for suggestive content 
sending the streamer on a massive rant where she took aim at others on the platform. Just because some female streamers do things really sets other streamers, female streamers up for bullshit. And it f***ing pisses me off. Like, I'm all about getting that bread. I am. I really am. <laughs> I'm like, yes, queen, do the hot tub stream, but <laughs> yes, queen. please yes, don't queen. do it on Twitch. Because it makes my life miserable. Because then I have people coming from your chat where they see your hot tits covered in bubbles to my chat asking to see mine. But we don't do that here. <laughs> it's like so She's frustrating. Upset. Guys, I think we all know where this is going. So wait, we don't have a, do you have a problem with this? No. Do you have, I really have no problem with it. So it's no, like, me neither. It doesn't affect it's the, me. It's the female gamers Man. and shit that are upset about this. You because know they're, they're being categorized to that all the girls on Twitch are doing this. Well, yeah, I think it just, it also kind of creates, but it creates a weird environment. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, you know, because Twitch is so positive, right? Yeah, it's a, yeah. You can't curse in there. It's all positivity. Like, even yeah, when yeah. you enter the so chat, they're like, watch your language, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't you know be mean. Saying? Don't be rude. Yeah, so you, you would think out. that Twitch would be against this to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think they're okay with it because it's getting more viewership. Yeah. So they're not really trying to stop it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're like, making money off of it. They're making money off of it, but they're kind of like indirectly being like, you know, there's no nudity here. Like we're not trying to be only fans and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But these these uh, these streamers who are exposing themselves, right? They're not yeah. necessarily breaking the rules. Yeah. You know. So like, if we censor them, we got to censor other motherfuckers. You know. Mm -hmm. All right. So wait. Check this out. Watch the entire video. Don't be a bitch. How is your day? It's going good. I'm getting all hot, hyped up on Coke Zero. Yes, thank you so much, Rich, Rich Mendy. So, Party seven chat, by the way, thanks for the follow. Of course, like I said, we all gotta support each other's. I can't speak right now. Support each other, us ladies and partners, streamers in general. So Twitch streamers, ladies, partners, streamers in general should all be supporting each other, right? That's what she said here. Pretty utterly uncontroversial statement. You know, most of these people, YouTubers included, by the way, are just complete assholes, but that's besides the point. But to say generally that you should support most of the people in your own community out there doing the same things that you are, okay, right? I happen to agree with that. So then why are some of these girls out there big mad? Someone tagged me in this tweet the other day. I think this explains it pretty well right here. Went on Twitch and seriously got confused as to what app I was actually on. What in the actual F happened to Twitch? I really want to know. And I, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I got to be honest. When that shit started popping up on Twitch, I was kind of like, yo, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it I was, was like, this is really happening. Yeah. It was just, it was getting a little weird, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, this is a weird shit because there's kids on this shit. There's all type of motherfuckers on this shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, is there even, I don't know. There's some screenshots here. So it's basically, as you could see, girls doing what a lot of girls on Twitch lately have been doing. Using their bodies to secure the bag, right? Sitting in their bikini, sitting in low-cut tops, sitting in a hot tub, <laughs> drinking, going on a stripper pole for some reason. God, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that the reason that they're doing this is because it's resulting in massive amounts of follows, subscriptions, mm. and donations. Um, I'll hopefully one of these days stop by your stream, but hello, girl, and thank you so much, Race Manny, for the time. Uh, why is she hopping like that? What? I mean, why are you she doing that? Stream, but please don't do it on Twitch because it makes my life miserable. Oh. I've been seeing more and more tweets like this, and it's fascinating to watch this kind of line being drawn down the middle of girls on Twitch, right? It's like, you got the ones over on one side that are totally cool with it, they're self-aware, they're just like, whatever, I'm just gonna get this money because it's gonna work. And then you got the other half here that basically just seem big mad over it. So basically, I mean, this you, everyone's upset about this because there's young kids, like there's young boys watching this shit, mm -hmm. and they're getting used to spending money in exchange for like, you know, I don't know, like some shit on Twitch. Like, cause they're subscribing, right? And they're mm -hmm. getting a shout out. Yeah. They're getting their name, you know, written mm -hmm. down. But they're also in the chat like, hey, like put your elbows together, you know? They're oh, like, okay. You know what I'm saying? And they're then they're requesting like, movements. They're putting like a, like, you know, like subscribe for five months, put your elbows together. Ah. Or like, can you do, can you jump around again? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So they're getting kind of like, People are saying this is a gateway to OnlyFans, and it's getting like kids hooked to like it's like opening the doors to like pornography and like weird shit. 
Um, but that's that's always happened. That's happened even in my age. And honestly, can you see this on YouTube? But it, but this is interactive. <laughs> yeah, you can see this shit on YouTube because they're not naked. Mm-hmm. They're just yeah. uh, they're just girls in a bikini, on like on like, it, you be, know. Because this is just something like someone like buying a Playboy when I was a younger kid, and we, you know that was a little softy. A little soft porn. It wasn't porn porn. It was just naked girls. But that led right. me into going to go look Dude, for the VHS. I mean, you got the internet nowadays, man. You can go, you go to the Playboy. Um, and I think. Not really because like you could block all that shit out. And I think these kids but already. You can, I don't feel like the parents will block that shit yeah, out. Yeah, they do, fam. Yeah. They, they block a lot. Fam, you don't. You have to block that shit out. But there's crazy one of them, shit. There's one of the homies from the, from the crew that's not blocked out. And all the kids probably go to his house and look at all this yeah, shit. Yeah, they probably don't have the login That's too. just like us when we was kids. There was that, that one homie that had the Playboy magazine, the Penthouse magazine. Or oh, the, the one the one porno video. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then mom was never house. home. Exactly. So it's like, this gonna, they're going to find a way to see this. Right. Yeah. So I mean, No matter what. And I think these kids are already on OnlyFans before you know I it. think I think there is something, though, when you're interacting with them. Because I then can, it, yeah. it starts to become a thing where you think this is how you Well, back interact, in the days, didn't we know? have the, um, what you call the number? The hotline. When, when they hunt your so-and-so, and you could like But that was pre-recorded. <laughs> it was pre-recorded. But you well, felt like you was interacting with them, but still. I used to, I used to call that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to pay for that shit, too, bro. I know. I didn't know that. Like nine ninety nine per minute? Like, it was banana. So it's yeah, kind of like the no, same thing. It's my, just like. My, my mom's had a $300 bill. Ooh, so, you horny fuck. So you're doing nothing different than what the kids are doing now. It's just now everything is better. It's visual. Yeah. It's visual, yeah. Let so. me just tell you something. That was one of the most embarrassing times of my life. <laughs> I, I had one of those moments. My like, dad hit me up. He's like, yo, why is the internet bill so high? Yeah. Oh, oh for real? I was like, whoa. <laughs> he was like, hey, your brother uses that computer. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. But yeah, go ahead. Not like I got sat down at the dining table and I got showed the phone bill. How old were you? How old? I was fuck, man. Maybe I think I, eight? I was. Okay, you see, I was like 11. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was like. You started off early. <laughs> I was eight or something. Yeah. And my mom was just like, you know, what are you doing? What are, what are you calling these numbers for? And she called one up. She's like, why are you calling this? Hey, this is like, why they scared your mom? You like, <laughs> your mom's probably like, I got a fucking freak as a son. <laughs> you nasty, bro. You started <laughs> early, man. <laughs> He was like, hey, daddy. No, but I guess they're saying that it's unhealthy, like, interacting with women like that well, because yeah, they, they, it's objectifying women and it's misogynistic. And then they can start just, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know. It's, it all has to do with par- parenting, too. But, exactly, yeah. yeah. But I don't know. That's one of the things that I was seeing on Twitch. Would, when I was, if, if you would make the same amount doing all these things that girls are doing, would you do it? Like, would you write? People's name on your skin. Me personally, yeah. If girls are in your nah, shit, on because Twitch. there's 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 things that I could be doing that other people are doing now, and I don't do it for money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I rather take an L, or I rather figure out another way to make money. Mm. You know, not like, to give you a visual, but I'll put webcam on my chest and they're paying the subscriptions. Be would you do that? <laughs> you would do it, right? Yeah. I would give a, a fuck. You're such a sucker for that. Yeah, show, yo. you would get into that hustle. Uh, yeah, I never would you on. do that shit. No, yeah, you would. <laughs> Nah, I no, you wouldn't no, wear no. like gray sweatpants. <laughs> if I needed the money, man, and be in the back. <laughs> if I needed that money, if I needed the money and it's coming in hot, it's times is hard, man. Throw me the Hershey bottle and I'm spraying. I, I might do that. <laughs> what would what would be the male equivalent to this? Like a a guy in gray sweatpants in a pool without a t shirt, without a t shirt, mm-hmm. and then just getting up. Out of the pool with, when you and know when throwing the, the oil on when the oh. wet sweatpants just stick to your whole body. <laughs> That's some shit Darren would do. <laughs> D would D you would do that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he would. He would, he would. Yeah, he would. No the equivalent would be a guy wearing Speedos. Yeah. But oh. Speedos looks whack. Yeah, I think it looks now, dorky. I, I think that the, the gray I mean, sweatpants. The gray sweatpants <laughs> looks thing that, yeah. the, the print. <laughs> Pause the print. But is there a print uh, regulation on Twitch? <laughs> I don't think so. Because they, they have a move. they have a nipple thing, so you can't oh. have wet nipples or anything like that on Twitch. But they're wearing bathing suits, so be right. Anyway, I thought this was interesting that because because <laughs> this is one of the things that men would never ever we could never make money off of this. No, don't. well, I guess I they could. Maybe, some men, I think some so, men, man. yeah. Depend on how. Okay, you look. None, <laughs> none of us three could no. ever do this. Definitely not, man. <laughs> no, we cannot. We cannot. This isn't an issue uh, yet. Not yet. I'm wondering if 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 there's any DJs that are going to do this though. Start oh, moving. Oh, don't to. we know someone that's been doing it? What do you What do you mean? <laughs> Wait, male a or D, female? A DJ we know. A female or male? A male. 
Oh, who's been doing OnlyFans? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You told yes. me about this. <laughs> That's Chelsea true. Him. Yeah. Chelsea, that I don't want to know if you should say his name. No, we're not. But... We're not. We're not. We're making him. No, he does OnlyFans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was a big EDM DJ. Yep. Exactly, <laughs> you can't call yeah. him a big EDM DJ. You got to stop. He was a th- <laughs> <laughs> Pause on that one. He was a veiny EDM DJ. <laughs> yeah. He was very sturdy, <laughs> strong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. No, Pause. he, um, yeah, he's on OnlyFans. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And I still follow follow him so i see his posts <laughs> on twitter because you know twitter you could like post you'd be sending them shit to us like yeah. wow we don't want to see this shit, like, where do you send them to you <laughs> yeah, i never seen that shit pause he'd be sending some crazy he'd be, he'd be posting some crazy shit he's nuts now nah, come on that shit is funny Literally. though when you see that <laughs> <laughs> i was like he yo. put some wild shit too I'm huh like, he'd be posting oh, wild he, yeah no he be posting <laughs> some wild shit man i was just like yo <laughs> What you think of my timeline, bro? I'm just nobody wants to see that shit. I don't want to see that shit. I, <laughs> Never's over there. I'm like, yo, I want to get updates on it. I want, I want to have what? him on the podcast. I think, oh, he, I think he'd be down to do it because yeah. I want to ask him about. Um, well, I want to ask him about a bunch of shit, but I do want to understand. I want to understand the OnlyFans thing. Well, I have a homegirl. I've been telling you that. Right. I want to get her on and She'd talk about great. it. But I, shout I, to her. I, I'm. I'm curious because I was I was watching something on um, on YouTube mm-hmm. and they were having a conversation with only fan girls mm-hmm. and they were saying that this line of work for only fans is not sustainable and they were saying like well why are you saying it's un- not sustainable and they were saying because yo check this out you go on only fans and you pose nude right because mm-hmm. people want to see you nude mm-hmm. maybe you have yeah. a big following on Instagram mm-hmm. and you pose nude on only fans. fans. Yes. Mm-hmm. After they subscribe for two, three months or less, does it get boring to see you nude? So you know, wait, wait. You know, I can talk about my homegirl. Well, wait, but let me just get through this cycle. Okay, go ahead. So does it get boring to see you, you know, nude only? Right. A little like motherfuckers gonna be like, yo, we want more. That's so what I'm then, saying, yeah. So then you maybe do oral sex, right? Mm-hmm. And then they get bored of oral sex. So do you have actual intercourse? Mm-hmm. Then they get bored of intercourse. So maybe you do like anal sex or you do something like that. They get bored of that. Then it becomes like, you know, group sex or maybe lesbian. or. Like, but there's a certain point where no matter how far you're going to be able to go because you have to rely on subscriptions, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to keep people drawn in. So you have to constantly do the next level shit. So yeah. at what point does the next, next, next level shit Become just like, eh, we seen it, done that. So my homegirl, she started off as a makeup person. Right. And then she had a Snapchat and she would get requested, yo, how much for news? How much for news? How much for news? It was mm-hmm. so much that she was like, well, let me try this out. And she started it. So she did makeup first. Yeah, she was a makeup. She so had a strong all these following. girls on Twitch, they're starting with gaming, so, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. so she had a strong following. She had at least five to 700,000 following on, on Instagram. And so her 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 Snapchat was kind of equally the same, five to seven hundred thousand, yeah, half a million, wow, yeah. to she, three quarters of a million followers or viewers. No, so she had five hundred thousand, I think five hundred to seven hundred thousand followers on Instagram first. Oh, as a makeup person, really? Yes, and then she had a Snapchat, and then people were request nudes and nudes and nudes, and she's like, "Well, this thing is popping up." Let's try this out. Wait, wait. So it wasn't that she wasn't making enough money and getting enough traction for makeup. No, she was. She, she. They were well off. They were really well off. So she was doing well with makeup. Yeah, but then that that other. So shit what came was through. attracting? So you, we don't know what was attracting her to maybe to she go just for tried it. it. She wanted to try it. She tried it. She sold some nudes. And was it for money? Because she didn't need the money. She didn't need the money, but she made the money. And she, interesting. And then she ended up. Yeah, she ended up making a lot of money. And then from there, she went to OnlyFans. And I think it's been almost three years that she's there. And she's still in the point ten percent Is like she still she's, doing makeup? No. She stopped that shit. Now, she, now she's doing straight OnlyFans. And she's living life. Her and her uh-huh. husband. She's paid out. <laughs> greatly. Paid. Greatly. In Vegas. In Vegas. She's greatly paid. Like she, she's, she's good forever. I mean, there's more in death. Do you want to plug her or no? Yeah, we can. I, I can plug her if you want. Yeah, plug her name. Are you <laughs> are you on her um, OnlyFans? No, no, I'm on the Twitter. I see everything though. But she didn't give you a free girl. subscription. No, no I don't she don't hook up. I don't, I don't ask for one. Uh, it's Alva J A L V A J A Y. You can look her Alva up. Alva J. 
Alva J. She's dope. Yeah, yeah so we'll, we'll we'll try to get Alva J on here. Yeah, we're trying to get your homie too. So you bring the dude and I bring the girl. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, are we gonna become this podcast? <laughs> no. I hope not, man. Let us know. <laughs> you guys have to ask questions. I don't Is care. this gonna be like road podcast jumping the shark? They got only <laughs> fans yeah, right? Is a little bit? <laughs> yeah. Well one is a DJ and yeah. And so, one isn't. One isn't. So <laughs> now we, we're getting different perspectives. All right. And on that note. <laughs> on that note, yo, I got a, a, a few shout outs. Mm-hmm. I got to shout out the, the homie, uh, DJ Beatnik in San Diego. Shout out. He I dropped. Haven't, I haven't spoken to Beatnik in a minute. How's ooh, he doing? He's doing great. He just released a dope ass fucking mixtape. Oh, shit. Um, Vacation Mix Part 2. Mm-hmm. Yo, uh, this is like been on steady repeat. It's really? just really dope Afro beats. Mm. It's just like perfect for like. You know, like, I don't know, just like summertime shit, man. It's mm-hmm. really good. Shout to Beat Nick. I think it's on his mix cloud. Right. Check, um, out. check that out. Also, I got to give a shout to Cheap Shot. Um, Cheap Shot's a homie from back in the days. Mm-hmm. Uh, he used to do those meetups. Remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Fire Pool. Fire Pool. He used to do the Fire Pool meetups with all the DJs. He was also the DJ for next the the New Kids on the Block. Yep. He DJed yeah. for New Kids on the Block. Shout out to Cheap Shot. He's a big homie, and um, he actually... Uh, just kind of uh, I think he's doing The production behind A new podcast mm-hmm. uh, His production company Is called uh, Stupid Fly That's dope But they just released A, a podcast called Fresh Era mm. and You know what Actually um, That homie from Scam Gene Hove Is part of that as well Oh word Yeah So mm-hmm. Fresh Era so, like, Let's talk about this For a second And we should have them On the podcast To talk mm. about it Fresh Era podcast Is like dedicated To all the 90s Golden era rappers And, and everyone in hip hop Mm-hmm. So they just, I think they just launched this They month. launched today. Today. They were streaming right. today for um, the launch. And then their first two episodes are Chub Rock mm-hmm. and Drez from Black Sheep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like amazing. I, I listened to a little bit of the Drez. Mm-hmm. The production value on is great. Like it's really like these, um, it's just a, it's a great podcast. So like definitely check it out. Fresh mm-hmm. Era. And then um, lastly, uh, got to give a shout to Silent Addy. My guy Who just released a new song With uh, Bomba Cat uh, It's called Brace oh, On wow. his Bashment Records Chats. We're gonna end it with that song For this episode Hey yo real quick Real quick I wanna plug DJ Audio One's Twitch page um, Twitch.tv Slash DJ Audio One All the homies have been Holding his page down While he's been in recovery All the DJs rallied together They've been keeping his page going DJing on his Twitch uh, making sure that he's getting some money in because because homeboy's been in recovery and we want him to focus on his health but not also worry about paying them hospital bills and paying for all his expenses while he's uh you know recovering um but the best way to really donate is to uh send him money directly and i want to put his paypal up um so make sure you can you know send him two dollars five dollars ten dollars twenty dollars whatever you can man Anything helps. Um, he's one of us. He's one of. He's a DJ, and this shit can happen to any one of us. And and um, we we gotta we gotta look out for each other. And uh, yeah, so uh, yo, big shout out to everybody. Be safe out there as everything's going o- opening up. You yeah. know what I'm saying. And this is Silent Addy. And then this is Silent Addy with Bomba Cat uh, Brace. All right, peace. All right, y'all. Peace. Yeah. 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 Come brace upon the general Let me see you, me know me, I forget the girl mm. Jamaican mixed with the beige and bubble upon it Your body hot from the one Brace upon the thing on it Yeah, your pussy good, me have to sing about it mm. Be a drive out and I think about it Are you forget the ring on me mm-hmm. Baby girl, let me tell you something mm. Cause I know you told me I'm the one Don't give it up By the wayside, then they say good things take time. Oh, this I know, take it slow. Baby girl, just wine, wine, brace, brace. 
She love it when I look in her face She say I like it when you do me that way Baby, you can get a key to my place Girl, come over You know I hate being sober You know I don't see no girl No girl, no one but you If you want to watch more episodes from Rogue Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace.